Good afternoon, everybody. Great to have you on the program. Let me go ahead and get the Facebook chat up. Hope you guys had a wonderful, restful Wednesday. Be on the program. Let's, yeah. There we go. Uh, good to see everybody on Facebook today. Good to see all the regulars and the members and the Patreon supporters on YouTube today. Alt Grendel, Air Suave, Ant444, Pyro, Jersey, Hunter, Cody, Reagan, Ars, Julian Z, Laura L. Stodd, Sebastian Sanchez, Michael Findlay, Tony J, Jake Lewis, everyone's here. Great to see all of you. Uh, we had a wonderful broadcast yesterday of Starfield because we got to explore a really, really interesting location. Um, that sadly looks like we'll never be able to go back to. I'm, I'm curious about that because it is a physical location on the planet, right? The prison. So why are we unable to ever go back? Unless there are certain instances that are only accessible during certain quests, which would explain why the Lopez family farm suddenly disappeared from RNI 2 when we went back to look for it. That's where my mind is at right now. Deuteronomist says, Stellar shirt, very apropos. Thank you very much. My ship shirt, shipment. My shirt shipment, not my ship shirtment. No, my shirt shipment finally came in and uh, I have a variety of new space themed designs that I originally intended to kick off my Starfield live streams with, but they got delayed, but they finally came in, so this is the first one. And I'll be going through the others as we continue with our Starfield broadcasts. Vince M says, hey Ox, not sure if you know, but you can get Hadrian as a crewmate slash companion. Uh, need to speak with Commander Tuwala and then speak with Percival. Cheers. Hadrian? Adrian? Is that the lieutenant aboard the Vigilance? Um, I think that's who you're talking about. Uh, great. Well, that would be great. Now, just so we're clear, crewmate or companion. So, a companion is going to... Well, I mean, the companion... I guess my question is, we've got four major companions that have deep stories and romanceable options, and that, of course, is Barrett, Sarah, Andresia, and Sam. Are there other... She's from the UC questline, says ArtPixel. Oh, Hadrian! Oh, my gosh! Right, right, from... Um, From the Terramorph plot. Well, we... That's right, Hadrian. Well, we didn't tell her about the true nature of her father. And that kind of pissed her off. So would she be willing to join us as a crew? I mean, we asked her after we left. We had an option to say, hey, uh, maybe we should hang out some more. Maybe you should join my crew. And she's like, no. You know that's not possible. But are you saying that that is possible? Or did I lock myself out based on the choices that I made? Carl says, nope, only the four major ones. Okay. All right, so we can we can get them onto our crew slash settlement, but we can't uh, we can't develop a big a big relationship with uh, with that person. Okay. Uh, Julian Z says, hi Ox, so good to see you on this Starfield Thursday. Hope you're well. What's the plan for today? Finish up the Crimson Fleet quest or do something different? The plan for today is to finish up the Crimson Fleet quest. Michael Findlay says, can you romance Amelia Earhart? That I don't know. Um, perhaps we'll run around with some other companions once we, once we complete romancing Andresia. Dumb Foxhill says, Hey, Ox, Hadrian is Ve Victus's clone daughter. Yes, I did finally get there in the end. Thank you very much, Doom, or Dom Foxhill. We'll have to go chat with her. Mm -hmm. 
So, right. To what uh, Julian was saying, I want to finish up the Crimson Fleet. Uh, and then, I don't know how long that's going to take. Depending on how much time we have left, um, we might get into other things. I definitely want to start settlement building. Uh, I want to do more side quests because I find that the the smaller um, side quests are better conducive to lore videos than these really long um, storyline quests that span multiple live streams. So I definitely want to do more of that. But there's plenty, there's plenty for us to get into. We finally got to modifying our weapons and getting through our um, crafting components. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm, 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 start, I'm starting to bump up settlement building in terms of priority because we have all of these resources that we just haven't plowed through yet and we are running out of room, quickly running out of room and we need more room. Vince M says, yes, you can get Hadrian as a follower and a crewmate. I got her. Talk to Command er, Commander Twala and then take a job for Percival. Alright, well maybe we'll tack that on uh, and tackle that later. Camellia says, hey Ox, you should try outpost building sooner rather than later so you can look out for needed resources. Okay, Camellius, will do. I'm, uh, uh, I'm full. Like, my cargo is full. I don't have any more room. But uh, hopefully, once I get more room on a, on a colony, then I'll be able to get more resources. Thank you, Camellius. V says, I doubt you'll be finishing the Crimson Fleet quest line today. It is quite long. All right, well then, um, yeah, you're probably right. I think I can uh, commit four or so hours to the broadcast today. We are starting a bit late, and I've got scotch and smoke rings tonight. Uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, scotch and smoke rings. That's the plan for today. Also, no live stream for Friday, because I need more time to work on my lore video, and I just haven't had the time this week necessary to get it done. So it's possible that I'll be able to sneak a live stream in tomorrow, but I'm going to try and take my Friday and dedicate it to knocking this lore video out. If I get it done early, then maybe I'll have a live stream. But uh, for the time being, we're going to go ahead and say that this is going to be the last live stream of the day, or of the week, um, except for Scotch and Smoke Rings later tonight. Omega Valwin says settlement building will really need the perks related to it because the good stuff are locked behind them. Uh, that, yeah, that's definitely something we've discovered with this game, um, which is really frustrating. But uh, I will be specking into settlement building eventually. Just I haven't focused on it yet because I haven't done it yet. Jorian Quivuij says greetings from the ne Netherlands. It's cozy. Or, as we say, gazel, gazelig. 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 Well, I wish I could speak um, Dutch. Uh, but I can't. I can't. But thank you very much, uh, Jorian. Good to see you all the way from the Netherlands. Wade Speakerman gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Wade. And congratulations to Shane, Intra, Jason, Scott, and Swizz. Thank you so much, everybody. And congratulations all. Schalk Engelbrecht says, Ship building stream turned the Kepler into a mobile base. Yeah, that's definitely something I would like to do. But again, I, before I can really do any, what I want, I need to spec points into it. Gondro Dim says, Outpost building is a perk point sink. It takes up too many points on a first playthrough. Yeah, I'm definitely getting those those vibes. I mean, it's taking it's taken me this long. What level am I now? I'm in my, my late 20s, early 30s. It's taken me this long to finally max out weapon engineering so I can modify my weapons the way I want to. I can only imagine how long it's going to take me to maximize outpost engineering and starship engineering to modify my ships and my... I mean, I could always use console commands to cheat, but that's never fun for the first playthrough, so... Jamin Cohen says, Sweetwater Cacti provide adhesive which can be found on the Gagarin planet in the Alpha Centauri system. That's great, Jamin Cohen. Thank you so much for that. Um... I'll definitely check that out 
when I get some time. Carl became a silver ox. Thank you so much, Carl. And Halfway Nuts says, I tried Outpost Building. A DLC is badly needed. Okay. Well, we remember from Fallout 4 that settlement building was the same until they addressed many of the issues with the Contraptions Workshop DLC, the Wasteland Workshop DLC, and of course the Vault Tech Workshop DLC, all three of which were focused primarily on settlement building. Um, there was a lot of... Uh, consternation among the fans at the time because many people had purchased the premium premium edition and they did so under the premise that there were going to be like six you know DLCs it turns out three of the six DLCs were all uh, settlement focused <laughs> I mean we got Far Harbor and Nuka World which were the only ones that really had any story well Wast Wasteland Workshop had the um, automatron no, no, there was the Automatron, right? Right. There was Automatron, which had story, and robot building. Far Harbor and Nuka World had story. Wasteland Workshop, uh, Contraptions Workshop, and vault Tech Workshop had minimal story at best. vault Tech Workshop had a little bit of story, but it was primarily settlement-focused. But the settlement building system improved dramatically in terms of the tool sets that we were able to use with each of those DLCs. However, the fundamental mechanics behind creating a settlement didn't really change, never, never changed much um, after the DLCs. It took mods to... I, well, I, I really enjoyed settlement building even without mods, but really it was the Place Everywhere mod for Fallout 4 that made made it possible for me to make settlements because I can't tell you how many times it was just infuriating to sit there and have an idea and sit there and try to make something only for it to be constantly read and no matter how you moved it you couldn't get it in the right position even if it looked like it was, it was supposed to work and the thing that annoyed me is the entire premise behind <clears throat> not being able to place something absolutely everywhere is to enhance realism well, we don't want a bunch of floating shacks. But it was so unpredictable because sometimes you would place a foundation on what is clearly a chunk of land that should be suitable for a foundation, and it wouldn't work, but you stick it to the side of a building or in a tree branch, and it does work. It was, it was unpredictable. So, anyway, th that aside, I am looking forward to getting into the, uh, the colony building system for Starfield. But the reason I'm hesitating and taking so long is because I know I can get lost in it. That's the thing. That's what got me in, in Fallout 4, the settlement building system. I got lost in it. I spent way too much time optimizing my settlements, working on my caravan routes and all of that. It was so much fun, but a huge time sink. <laughs> so I'm wanting to get through the story now, and then we'll get into colony building a, a little bit later. Jamin Cohen says you shouldn't need any special perks to add crafting modules to any of your ships. Ah, okay. That would prevent me from having to go back to the lodge in order to modify my gear. I could do that. I could do that. But as I'm currently working with pre-built ships, I don't really want to um, harm the silhouette of these pre-built ships or change too much about them. I've added a few weapons and shielded cargo and all of that, but I don't really want to change the, the layouts of them and all of that yet. Eventually, I'll sit down with a fresh canvas and make my own ship. But right now, I'm just gonna go with what we've got. Toby Noble says, my notification came in super late. Already nine minutes in? Uh, it, it, yeah, we, we're about nine minutes in. I've just been ranting, really. Um, this is the, the ten minute ranting period of the broadcast. We'll get into the gameplay period in just a little bit. Don't worry, the rant is almost over. Jason Stanley says, doesn't the Kepler have a workshop? It might I'll have to check it out, but I really need to modify the Kepler's weapons because it's slow and chunky. It hits hard in combat, but it's not very nimble. I have found space dogfighting to be much easier on the Star Eagle, the Free Star Collective ship that we got. It's an amazing ship. We just had to modify a few weapons here and there, but it was great. Speaking of, uh, update on the Ox plushie. 
they're almost finished with the first prototype and they're going to be sending it to me soon. So hopefully soon I'll be able to have something physical in my hands that I can show off on the broadcast. It won't be available for sale at that time. They're just sending me the prototype, but I should be able to show that off soon to gauge your interest, see how much you guys like it, and then we'll dive right into production to get that plushie out there for everybody. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, the exit save is about a minute after um, the hard save. Let's load the hard save there. Okay, and I believe we have we had just arrived. So the plot, so for those of you who missed the last broadcast, let me sum up really quickly what happened. We went to the prison, we discovered the cell where the original Crix guy who founded the Crimson Fleet was, and there we found some information under a lamp that led us to believe that the fabled treasure, the legacy, was real. And it wasn't just a pirate legacy, it was money that was on the wreckage of a physical ship called the Legacy. So now we're trying to track down the location of the Legacy, and to do that we need to get some information from a Gal Bank um, representative who is currently attending a meeting or a party aboard a ship. So we're trying to infiltrate this ship and we got to get this information from this guy. At the same time, uh, Neyra wants a medal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to understand this little subplot here. Nero wants a medal. She sees it as her score. Apparently, long before um, they discovered that the legacy information was aboard the ship, she had been trying to infiltrate the ship to steal a medal or a gem because she can scrap it for parts and make a ton of money. So she doesn't want that score being disrupted. So while we're here, we have to simultaneously get the information about the legacy and get the gem that we can bring back to her so that she can make her score. Uh, but we gotta figure out what we're gonna do there. So that's where we're at. We had just docked with the ship. I feel like I need to be wearing a tuxedo. Well, hello. I mean, you're not very good at your job. Look at all of those footprints. Look at all of that. Hard times. All right, everything here is set to own. Even that. Oh man, I need Digipix too. Okay, not too interesting. Halfway Nuts says, what's the story of the t-shirt saying, yay balls? Chat, would you like to fill him in on the yay balls shirt? I don't know if I have time to get into the nooks and crannies of that particular story. Actually, I think the entire story is summed up uh, succinctly in a short that I published to YouTube, uh, Twitch, no, not Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and uh, Instagram. So you can find it anywhere. Just find one of my channels and you can find a short that says yay balls, and that'll explain, um, it'll explain the whole balls thing. Basically, when it comes to sports, 
They all involve balls, so yay, yay balls. And really, that's it. Hopefully the low temperatures do not interfere with our electronics. About time you showed up. All right, I want to know what's going on. I've been trying to get Delgado's attention for, oh, I don't know, three years now. And what do I get? Nothing but radio silence. Then out of nowhere, just when Neva and I are closing in on a huge score of our own, Delgado orders me to help you out. That is quite an outfit. Trident Luxury Lines, that is just... That's an amazing outfit. What, no formal tour of the ship? Oh, sure, sure. First a tour, followed by a formal dinner at the captain's table. Let's get one thing straight. You're here for business, not for a vacation. So let's start by talking about Delgado's sudden olive branch. Why follow Delgado's orders if you're not in the Crimson Fleet? Because the only way to achieve a win is by agreeing to play the game in the first place. Worst case scenario, I don't make the fleet, but I end up a couple thousand credits richer. That's almost a win-win, a don't you think? I mean, worst case scenario, you piss off Delgado and he kills you. All right, we could say you should be happy Delgado is including you at all or I'm just following Delgado's orders, or we can say, I can see how that would be unsettling. Well, do we want a tough guy ourselves through this, or do we want to appease to, uh, appeal to his, um, his empathy, I guess, or empathize with his pain as a way of manipulating him? Uh, let's see what's, what he says if, if we choose the I can see how that would be unsettling option. Well, I'll be damned. Someone from the fleet finally agrees with me about something. It's a goddamn miracle. So Neva's message said you were here for Dombrowski. Was that all she sent you here to do? Or was there something else you were sent here to steal? Wade Speakerman gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Wade, and congratulations to RCG3, Wasteland Angel 24, Wyatt Lives 83, Fabian Burned Kraus, and Soul Blade Hero. Thanks again, Wade, and congratulations all. Okay, um, so the tricky bit about this is Nava doesn't really want to share the money with this guy, so. But she was also working with him in order to get it. We could say, why don't you ask Neva yourself? Don't play games with me. We both know pinging a message back and forth to the key is going to take longer than we have to do this job. We're supposed to be working together on every part of this. So, you're gonna tell me what else you're here for or not? We could say, nope, that's the only reason I'm here. Or Neva asked me to steal the Earth Savior Award. Or I'd prefer to keep it to myself. I mean, the guy clearly knows that we're here for other things. Like, especially if we can say, why don't you ask Neva yourself? And perhaps we can buy him off? I don't think there's a way that we can get through this without him knowing. Like, it'd be pretty obvious if he knows that we're here and we walk away with information about the Galbank transfer, and then, oh, also, the Earth Savior Award magically disappears. What could have happened to it? We'll go with Neva asked me to steal the Earth Savior Award. Oh, really? Did she now? I can't believe she's trying to cut me out of this deal. Without me, the award never would have ended up here in the first place. And this way, we can get more information about the plan from him. 
What was the original plan you had with Neva? I spent months manipulating the Turan Preservation Society to hosting their gala affair aboard the Siren of the Stars. I had to arrange the event to make sure that the award was aboard the ship. Neva said she'd do the rest. When I got a message about Dubrovsky, I assumed she'd be tagging along to steal the award. But looks like uh, she said you in her place. You don't want to be on Neva's bad side. Without her, you're also never getting back into the fleet. Or don't worry, you're still gonna get paid. Yeah? Funny you're only bringing that up now. Fine, I'll help. But you're doing all the legwork, and I'm still taking my cut of the payout. Anyway, we'll get to that later. First, we have a much bigger fish to fry. So why are you targeting a Gall Bank exec anyway? Not exactly your average Crimson Fleet prey. Why the interest? What do you consider normal prey? Merchant vessels, transport, supply convoys, mining settlements, you get the picture. But taking on a megacorp, that's a really big deal. Something the Crimson Fleet stayed away from in the past. Sounds to me like Delgado's either getting desperate, or this is leading to an even bigger score down the road. Huh. We could say Delgado wants Dombrowski's Galbank credentials. This definitely is not his business. Or I don't trust you enough to share sensitive information yet. Or wonder all you want, that's all the information you're getting. Hmm. Oh, I see. We're playing this game now. Fine, fine. Well, you might as well turn around and hop back aboard your ship because you're not getting near Dombrowski without my help. It would seem we have little choice in the matter. We should hear him out. I can't speak for Delgado. I'm sure the fleet can slide some credits your way, or you obviously have something specific in mind. Well, well, it appears we have a mind reader here. You're absolutely right. I don't want money. I want back into the Crimson Fleet. It's as simple as that. What? You don't need money? Of course I do. But who wants to settle for a one-time payout? I prefer to play the long game. You see, getting my ass back into the fleet means I regain access to Shinya Boss. And that's as good as an endless stream of credits. You really think I have the ability to promise something like that? You'd better, or you're gonna have to find another Gal Bank executive. As long as Dombrowski's on the ship, he's all mine. We could say, help me get Dombrowski and you're back in the fleet, or I can put a word in with Delgado, but it's up to him to pull the trigger, or we can pass a Crimson Fleet check to say, yeah, you're in no position to make demands right now, just do as you're, you're told. I'm starting to regret some of my choices here. I'm starting to think that we should have hid as much information as possible from him and made as many promises as possible to him to get the best outcome. I don't think he's quite as clever as I initially thought. Let's see what happens if we pass the Crimson Fleet check. Fine. You want to play it that way and suit yourself. Dombrowski's a full-timer aboard the Siren of the Stars. Probably spends more time cruising the space lanes than actually working. Fortunately, the Siren is hosting the Tehran Preservation Society charity gala. Larry won't be able to resist showing off his VIP clout. To get what you need, you're gonna have to attend the gala, talk to his fellow philanthropists, and dig up some dirt. Oh no. Is shooting everyone an option? Alternately shooting ourselves to avoid it? <laughs> What's a full-timer? Someone with enough disposable income to afford a permanent six-figure cabin aboard one of Trident's uh, finest space liners. Wow. 
Consider it similar to owning a luxury mobile vacation home. Play a thing for the wealthy, you get the gist. Anything you can tell me about the gala? The event's a complete sham. Bunch of rich snobs getting together and throwing a party for themselves. These people couldn't give a damn about Tehran Preservation or any other charity for that matter. Three options. I'm gonna skip all that and talk to Tum to Dombrowski, so you barely lift a finger while I do all the work, or I didn't bring my dinner jacket. <laughs> yeah, well, lucky for you, it's not black tie, so you'll be fine. This card will allow you to access the Starview Ballroom. If you need my help, I'll be relaxing in one of the upper level lounges. Head inside and mingle with the crowd. No one likes Dombrowski, so They'll be more than happy to share his dirty secrets. Mingle with the crowd, all right. What sort of dirty secrets are we talking about? He's a VIP executive, which means he either worked really, really hard using blood, sweat, and tears to make the arduous climb to the top, or he backstabbed, lied, cheated, and betrayed his way up the corporate ladder. From what I've heard, it's the second option. We could say I don't mingle well. Hey, as long as there's free booze. Or we can pass a neon street rat check to say, hey, if there's any Aurora around, then it'll be a party. All right, Speedy, take it easy. <laughs> You're not going to find that kind of junk aboard a Trident Starliner. Oh, there's one last thing. Trident equips all of their Starliners with the latest acoustic threat detection. What? Meaning that you lose patience and kill anyone aboard the ship, security will be alerted and all hell will break loose. Gotcha. Anyway, I suppose that's enough to get you started. Good luck. So no murder because there's an acoustic threat detection system installed on the ship. Come on. <laughs> oh, is that a gunshot? I don't know. Let's check the acoustic detection threat detection meter. Yes, it registers as a gunshot. To arms, everyone. <laughs> All right, why can't I just kill Dombrowski and take his credentials off of his body? You seriously need to ask. Okay, I'll give you two reasons. First, Gold Bank protects their own. Kill Dombrowski, and they send Ecliptic after every Crimson Fleet ship they can find. Not something Delgado wants, I suspect. And second... You up a Gal Bank employee in every single Gal Bank facility in the settled systems will triple their security. I'm gonna guess that won't help with whatever your plans are regarding Gal Bank, now will it? And what if we decide to knife the guy? Like, that's not noisy. We could kill him quietly with a knife. That's not gonna set off the acoustic threat detection system, is it? It's a weird concept. It's just weird. All right, what's the deal with the, this uh, Terran Preservation Society? They claim their goal is to celebrate the soul of the Earth, the culture, the people, and the ideals of the past. In their minds, Earth is now dead, which is why they feel that preservation of its remaining aspects is so important. In reality... This is what happens when folks with far too much time and far too much money get together to make themselves feel like they're contributing to society. <laughs> the way he said that. Can you help me with the Earth Savior Award? As long as you remember that I'm getting paid my cut, I'll help you with anything you want. What's the status of your plan? Uh... You think Neva will have any problems selling the award? I once saw Neva strip down a UC security ship and uh, sell the parts back to the UC through a shell company. If that doesn't put your concerns to rest, I don't know what will. Now tell me, what about the status of your plan? How can I help? I've just gotten started. Okay, then let me point you to the person in charge of the award. Her name's Sheila Holbrook. And you can probably find her in the Starview Ballroom. I'd press her to reveal where the award's hidden, and we can go from there. Okay. If you're thinking of pulling the trigger on poor Miss Holbrook, remember that any gunfire is going to set off the ship's alarms. All right. 
Oh, and while you're at the gala, avoid the canapes. They're frozen, not fresh. Ooh. Oh, pa. Right. <clears throat> Optional. Speak to Sheila about the ES award. Optional. Kill Larry Dombrowski. But the primary quest is to ask society patrons about Larry Dombrowski. the engines can you you're not going to find better tuned engines anywhere else in the saddled systems <coughs> well pardon me this guy was proud of, uh, of his ship's engines we said this guy a lot I think they reuse his face and hair a lot was oh, that the robot yeah, that must have been the cleaning robot. Okay. Now the gala is that way. But I also need to find evidence, remember? Captain Rokov is one of the most easygoing COs I've ever worked under. In fact, he doesn't act much like a captain at all. And uh, the thing is, we are looking for Crimson Fleet evidence and we're on a Trident luxury liner. Uh, there's doubtful. Uh, it's doubtful there's gonna be very much evidence here unless it's in what's his name's bunk. So that's probably the only place we're gonna find any evidence at all. Now, all of this is set to own, and I'm not trying to steal, at least not around Andresia. She'll probably dislike that. But um, the reason I'm doing this is because oftentimes there are things that are not set to own, like perk magazines and key cards and that sort of thing. So I still need to be really thorough. I'm in the final stages of uh, getting over this head cold, and it all seems to want to come out right when I'm... Uh... These newer vessels more or less run autonomously, which doesn't leave much for the crew to do around here. Well, we have found a, a slate charging dock, a slate Every day support. that I wake up in my bunk, I count my blessings to have been posted to a ship like the Siren of the Stars. Hey, this is was... one of Trident's top-of-the-line vessels. Hell of a ship, isn't it? Trident must have spent a fortune equipping this ship with triple redundancy in almost every internal system. You're a guest of Captain Rock. Oh Rokov, my god. Right? Welcome aboard. I don't know why I bother talking when I'm r around other characters, because they just talk and talk and talk and talk. I can't get a thought out because they're constantly yapping. See, this cred stick, for example, is not set to own. So we can snag it without fear of angering and drinking.
Okay, this... Where is this taking us? It's suddenly taking us back in the direction we want to go. Sorry, I'm busy right now. Claudia Swist. Lovely party, isn't it? Nothing but the finest at this gala. Alright, so the party is gonna be off that way. We want to avoid that for now. Let's continue going up, since that's where we need to go. Oh. Or not. Huh, this is where we need to go? Oh, it's another one of those layouts that's just intrinsically confusing. Let's retrace our steps and go back to where we were so that we can try to connect the dots. Between you and me, forward. the best part of my job is getting a crack at all the leftovers from the dining area buffets. Gravity Paradigm, I think that's about grav drives. I think we've read that before. All right, we've got a door over here. Okay, we got a kitchen. With our first terminal. Locked, but the novice locked. All right, we can put that there. We can put that there. Which means this needs to go here, and this needs to go there. Company communications. Oh, dear God. <clears throat> Trident Com ICC 8456A. Captain. We've received your incident report regarding Deck Officer Kendley, who was reported missing about a week ago. According to what I'm reading, it looks like you've conjecturized. Is that a word? Conjecturized? That Kendley had a drinking problem and was last seen in a drunken state near one of the main airlocks. Hmm. Three minutes after the sighting, the airlock triggered depressurizing Section 7A, and then Kenned Kennedly Kendley was unfortunately sucked out into space. If this sounds accurate, we'll continue our investigation from here. If any new information surfaces regarding the incident, keep us informed. In the next one, Trident Corporate. Captain, would you please confirm and advise on the following missing items from VOY-765? According to our dock master at the arrival port, these did not arrive as expected. 10 crates of precious metals, 15 crates of wine and liquor, 10 crates of synthetic clock, cloth, and 20 crates of furnishings. Once you fill out the incident report, we'll start investigating. Probably just a miscount at the origin end of the voyage, but doesn't hurt to keep things safe. Captain, please be aware that the Terran Preservation Society will be booking the Sirens next voyage, and they will require full use of the Starview Ballroom. Extend every courtesy to their people and ensure that their event goes exactly as planned. This is a significant client, and we don't want to risk losing this account. We'll send specific details in the future. Captain, we are still awaiting answers to our inquiry regarding the Siren of the Star's last three voyages. On every occasion, the ship's cargo was several thousand kilos lighter at the arrival port. Simply chalking these up to human error is unacceptable. May I remind you that the missing cargo holds a substantial dollar value that we're responsible to cover due to loss? If we don't have a proper report from you by the end of the month, we will be forced to launch a full investigation. Hmm. Could it be our friend who wants to join the Crimson Fleet? Personal communications. Unknown source. Please note, this message has no identifying origin code. Read with caution. All right, Rokov, I talked to the big guy, and just like I thought, he said there's no way you're coming back. You had a chance, and you blew it. How hard is this to understand? Between you and me, the only way you're going to get him to change his mind is by giving us something we can sink our teeth into. Something big. And it better be good, because last time was a disaster. 
trying to offload 20 crates of furniture wasn't worth the time or the money, so never again. And we begin to understand why the ship is lighter when it comes into port. I'm going to throw you a bone, Rokov. Got a deadbeat on your ship, one of the crew. Name's Kentley. He owes us about four large from some bad bets he made back on Neon, and now Vincent wants his head. Make sure Kendley misses his next trip, and we'll see about changing the big guy's mind about having you back. Oh my God. So Rokov killed Kendley. Got him drunk and sucked him out an airlock. Good work on the Kendley thing. Not only did you send a message to every deadbeat in Neon, but you notched up a few ranks in my book as well. Only problem is it wasn't enough. I'm gonna need more. The big guy doesn't want to budge on this one, so you need to light a fire under his ass. You need a big score. Huge. Keep your eyes and ears open, and I'll see what I can do on my end. They are never letting him into the Crimson Fleet. It is never going to happen. Got your message about the prize that's about to find itself aboard. Now that's what I'm talking about. Since the event is coming up in a few weeks, I'll jump back home and try to convince someone to come out there and lend you a hand going to keep this one kind of quiet or else everyone will want a piece. If this works out, I'm almost positive the big guy will change his mind about you. Might cost you a chunk of change, but you want back in so you can play the long game, right? Well, we know whose terminal this is. I never had the patience for computer systems. Yet. Okay, so this is his private quarters. I thought it was a kitchen. What is with this music? And we can see why he's so eager to join the Crimson Fleet. After stealing all of those cargo, Trident is now holding him accountable. And he needs to get off this ship as soon as possible before he starts to owe people money. Hey, look at that. Request denied evidence. Rokov, once again, I'm refusing your request to rejoin. We are not a membership club here, Rokov. This is the Dagon Crimson Fleet. You don't apply. You try out and a Neva doesn't... If Neva doesn't put a hole in your skull, you get picked. That's how this works. You already went through it once, you had your chance, and you blew it. If you want to get my attention, maybe you should try scoring something valuable off that piece of crap you call a Starliner. Neva told me you lied about your record on the application to get that gig, so might as well put your position to good use. Cut the fleet in for a chunk of the creds, and maybe I'll start listening. Until then, stop contacting us. You know, you gotta be annoying if the Crimson Fleet doesn't kill you. Instead, they go, stop pestering me. Jeez. <laughs> Whoop it. Gosh. Oh, master safe. All right, let's quick save. Oh man. Oh my god. Wow. 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 Okay. Nope, that'll only work with another one. That's exactly like it. So we're gonna have to use that and that. Because we would need an another one like that, that's exactly like it, which we don't have. So these are the only two options. Now, this one only works for the top, that's good news. And we've got this that we could put right there. Uh, which is good news as well, but uh, that leaves this for the bottom. This for all. That would work there, but we have overlap there. So if that's not for the bottom, that's going to have to be for the middle. This one 
If we use that there, we've got overlap there as well. The problem is that uh, we have very few other ones that work for the top. I mean, we could use that, but then we'd have to fill in with singles, and we're going to need those singles elsewhere. So let's use that and that. Now, we've got that and then another single. So we'll go ahead and use that. If we use that, we can't use this. So it's one of those two. Bingo. It's this and that. Hey, and it's not set to own. Wow. I'm stealing from Rokov's safe, and it's not set to own. Furious new UC naval cutlass. Okay. Why? Does my cigar keep going up? Now, it's possible that we'll find more evidence aboard the ship, but I think it's highly unlikely because the only Crimson Fre Fleet operative aboard the ship is Rokov and we just looted his chamber and we found evidence here. So we'll keep our eyes open, but I doubt we're going to find more evidence aboard the ship. Unless we need to pickpocket him, it could be that he's holding evidence. Okay, there was the captain's quarters. We Captain Rokov said you're allowed in any of the crew specific areas. Just don't touch anything, please. Thank you so much. I'm here because the captain says it's okay. Set to own. There's nothing quite like the view from the Starview ballroom. It's breathtaking. Expectations. What I'm really gonna must have spent a fortune equipping this ship with triple redundancy in almost there is every nothing quite like the view from the Starview ballroom. It's breathtaking. Oh my god, it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't the same dialogue over and over again. We've been here for 10 minutes and we've already had these guys repeat them over and over again. Really, the main thing that I'm going to be looking out for now are our books that give us new Earth locations. I'm hoping we find some aboard. Hey. Not set to own, and yet those are set to own. This is one of Trident's top-of-the-line vessels. Hell of a ship, isn't it? What's a deployment deck? It is one heck of a ship, that's for sure. These newer vessels more or less run autonomously, which doesn't leave much for the crew to do around here. Okay, barracks number one, check. Captain Rokoff said you're allowed in any of the crew-specific areas. Just don't touch anything, please. All right, we've got laundry. Man, I don't get it. As the captain of a Trident luxury liner, Rokov is probably raking in the cash. I don't understand why he would want to risk all of that by trying to work with the Crimson Fleet. 
Listen. Can you hear the engines, can you? You're not going you to find better tuned engines anywhere else in the settle system. Captain Rokov is one of the most easygoing CEOs I've ever worked oh, under. Wow, in fact, have a timer. he doesn't act much like a captain at all. They've got they got to put it on a timer. It's just insane at this point. Once all oh, get out of my way. Once we hear dialogue, once we hear dialogue, it's got to be put to like a five minute timer so we don't hear the exact same thing over and over again. Because this is just insane. <laughs> Okay. Every day that I wake up in my bunk, I count my blessings to have been posted to a ship like the Siren of the Stars. Zarteth says, The triple, triple, triple redundancy in almost every system, system, system is truly breathtaking, 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 and that's why I love, love, love working on this Starliner, Starliner, Starliner. Thank you, Zarteth. Oh, you're just making my life so much better here. Glad you can empathize and appreciate. You're a guest of Captain Rokov, right? Welcome aboard. Starview Ballroom. All right, so we found it's it's an interior cell. Oh, I didn't realize it was going to be a separate interior cell. Okay, so we found a back door to the to the star room uh, view ballroom. That is going to be handy later, I'm sure. But let's finish exploring this section. This is one of Trident's top of the line vessels. Hell of a ship, isn't it? Okay, we came through here. We came from there. We explored everything down there. We're finishing the loop over here. These newer vessels more or less run autonomously, which doesn't leave much for the crew to do around here. Oh, you could shut Captain up. Captain Rokov is do. one of the most easygoing COs oh, I've ever worked under. In fact, he doesn't act much like a captain. Deck officer Captain Galata's Rokov said late. you're allowed in any of the crew specific areas. Just don't touch anything, Shh. please. Listen. Can't hear the engines, can ya? You're not gonna find better tuned engines anywhere else in the settled systems. It's been a crazy 24 hours and I'm exhausted. Tried in short step the flight so that left three of us who had to stay up all night to set up the Starview uh, ballroom. Place looks amazing, but I doubt the snobby TPS passengers will even notice. Anyone that has enough money to ride on the sirens certainly isn't going to care about the effort we put into keeping them comfortable. Really ticks me off how those rich folk just expect all of it to happen. Maybe it's time I took uh, Havertino up on his offer to transfer to Trident's cargo division. Honest work and no one's thumbing their nose up at me? Sounds tempting. You're a guest of Captain Rokov, right? Welcome aboard. You know what be would be really cool? And I don't know if they'll do this, but what would be really cool is if, if we could find uh, slates and overhear conversations Trident must have spent a that would unlock new dialogue options that we can have. There's with nothing the quite like the view from the Starview Ballroom. It's breathtaking. Uh, uh, with the passengers of the Star Room, uh, Starview Ballroom. Okay, Every day that I wake up in my bunk, I count my blessings to have been posted to a ship like the Siren of the Stars. Oh, I gotta get away from people. I just got to get away from people. All right, here we are back down here. We have done the full loop. So, with all of that explored... Between you and me, the best part of my job is getting a crack at all the leftovers for the dining area. Oh, this was a dead end. It was down here, yeah, and then up here, right. Between you and me, 
the best part of my job. That's the exact same dialogue. The it's the exact the same dialogue place. within 20 seconds of each other from two different characters. How is how did this escape Q Q and A? Ah. Donald Moore says, sorry, Ox, I can't hear you over all that jabbering. Oh, I can't hear myself over all that jabbering. <sighs> okay. But well, we could go up again. Uh, but now that we know that the Starlight uh, Ballroom, or the Starview Ballroom, is an, in an interior cell, we can explore with more freedom. Lovely party, isn't it? Knowing that we're not going to stumble upon... Uh, a point of no return, something that advances the plot without, without our permission, essentially. Hello. Hello. What have we here? Passenger Vegra Gabriel. Passenger po profile Gabriel Vera. Status single passage. Current stay length, single itinerary, residence type deluxe, special instructions, UC security has authorized this passenger to be armed with and carry a firearm. Please see Trident Operations Manual for details and clarification. Current cabin status, entry prohibited without cabin access pass. Okay, do I waste my digi picks on picking this now? Or do I find a key and a pass later? The purser. Please let me know if your voyage is unsatisfactory in any way. Glad to have you aboard. What exactly does the chief purser do on a Starliner? An excellent question. My responsibilities include all of the Siren's financial, customs and commercial goods transfers. Honestly, I really enjoy the work. I get to meet people at every port of call instead of being constantly stuck below decks. Can I store things with confidence in your safe? Oh, absolutely. The safe is magnetically sealed and shielded with multiple layers of fully damage resistant vacuum proof plating. In the unlikely event, our vessel is boarded and the threat detection alarm is triggered. The safe will be permanently sealed until it reaches port. Oh. In the even more unlikely event, this ship is destroyed. We can assure you that your loved ones will be able to recover your goods from the wreckage. So, as you can imagine, your property will be completely secure until you decide to retrieve them from our safe. So, if we shoot anybody and trigger the alarms, we lose access to the safes. What do you think of Captain Rokov? I'm sorry. It's against Trident policy to discuss our personal feelings towards a fellow crewmate. Forget it. Sorry to have pried into your personal business. Let me give you some credits to clear your conscience. Or we can pass a persuade check to say if there's something going on with Rokov, I'd love to know. I don't want to lose my job. Why should I tell you? Oh, and they're making it difficult for us. Look at this. We got to get six persuasion points, but they're only giving us ones and twos. What's the harm if you help me? I mean, it might be okay. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm still willing to talk. <laughs> they don't even give us a two. They only give us a one or a three. Wow. That's diabolical. Nobody will ever know if you tell me, I promise. I mean, it might be okay. All right, but you didn't hear this from me. Do you understand? I don't want to lose my job. I like Captain Rokov, but I think he's mixed up with some very dangerous people. I was bringing some paperwork to his quarters one day, and I found a slate with a message he received from someone named Delgado. That would normally be fine, but the message mentions the Crimson Fleet as in pirates. Can you believe it? If you want to grab it, the slate should still be in his quarters somewhere. We get a tip, but it's about something we've already discovered. Ah. 
Man of Warp says, at least there's some variation in this idle chatter. In a Bioware game called Dragon Age Inquisition, in one area, you'll hear the phrase, tired of waiting around, in a bad French accent about 20 times a second. Oh, dear God. I can only imagine the horror. Oh, that would drive me crazy. <laughs> Thank Don't you, forget to tell your friends how much you enjoy the cruise. Yeah, now you go walk off. You go walk off. Because I want to reach a terminal. Hey, can I get her to can I get her to move like I did with what's his name? On behalf of Trident Luxury, have a safe journey. Glad to have you aboard. <laughs> Please let me know if there's anything I can do to Go make you stay more comfort. comfortable. Safe room computer requires key. Now you know what we used to be able to do in Fallout 4. <clears throat> and I'm hidden! I'm hidden, and I'm reading it from the back. Yeah, <laughs> never change, Bethesda. Well, I'm I'm celebrating too soon. We'll see. <laughs> okay, we need uh, this one here, and then I think that's gonna be good. But just to be safe, let's put that there. Put that. There. Now that's overlap now. Yeah, that's no longer overlapping. But now we need one for there. Okay, that's gonna make it tricky. Okay, we could put that there. What if we do that? Then that's gonna have to go there. Ah, I'm glad we didn't sink it. Well, we know this has to go there. Or. Okay, let's try and make it... Okay, so that's top only, and that's the only spot it'll fit. That's top only. So, we should be safe with that. If we do this, let's go... There, and then there. Okay, I was just overthinking it. Okay, safe contents database. Marina and Salinga. Assorted jewelry, 15 pieces. Shelia Holbrook. The Large Trophy Earth Savior Award. Okay, we found it. The, the Earth Savior Award is in the safe of Shelia Holbrook. Carlos Serrano. Stamp collection, coin collection, chunks collectible, gold foil trading cards. Wow, okay. Lockdown procedures. And this updates our quest log. <clears throat> Trident Operations Manual. In the event of a ship-wide lockdown, the purser on duty will lock their computer and report to their mustering location on A deck. Any passenger with a valid claim ID will still be able to access their goods through the auto retrieval system. Once the lockdown has been canceled, the purser on duty will return to their normal posting and continue to assist passengers until port of call arrival. In the event that the vessel has been attacked either internally or externally, the magnetic seal will be activated on the safe and access will be fully restricted. Any passenger with a valid claim ID will have to wait until the ship's alert has been canceled to access their goods. Okay, so don't trigger an alert by shooting anybody. But it's okay to trigger a ship-wide lockdown, but only if we have the valid claim ID. Claim ID procedures. Once a valuable is stored in the purser's safe, the passenger is to be issued a claim ID. 
that will allow them to access their valuables at any time. Note that the claim ID will use the safe's internal compartmentalization system to only allow access to the passenger's specific valuables. In the unlikely event the safe becomes overloaded, please apologize to the passenger and tell them that they are welcome to use the safe located in their cabin to store their goods. Note down their name and contact that passenger if any claim IDs are returned. So, this is telling us that a claim ID, if owned by a passenger, is likely stored in that passenger's safe in their room, which we can then use on the safe in here once we trigger a ship-wide lockdown. We need to find the room of Shelia Holbrook. Please try not to alert anyone to what you're doing. I didn't, Andrea. Look at that. I hacked this computer while she's sitting in front of it. <laughs> okay, this requires a key. So, we either need the claim ID or we need a lockdown to be able to access the purser. But now we know where it is. Ooh, this is pretty. For the safe if this is not the very definition of decadence, I do not know what is. Or security members of our vessel. Brochure. Hey, cool. It's a NASA brochure. What's a NASA brochure? Trident Luxury Lines Bindi, A Universe of Leisure. Kodos, Style Among the Stars. Hmm. Okay, here's the primary door to the Starview Ballroom. So we have found two doors that lead to the Starview Ballroom. This goes around back down there. Laundry services. Did someone leave their key card in their pocket? Laundry services, I'm asking for a friend. A Starview pass is required to enter the main ballroom. Laundry machine, fashionable suit, casual street suit, urban slackwear, vested suit. Okay. Explorer's pack, and it's better, 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 better. Everything but radiation is better than what I currently have, but it doesn't have any legendary At effects. At the moment, Aurora isn't permitted on Trident Starliners, though we're working on having that changed. Larry Dombrowski. That's Larry Dombrowski's room. <sighs> Well, before I start hacking into their rooms, I should talk to them. Okay, this is a bit of a maze. Let's go around the perimeter first. That goes down. Shelia Holbrook. Expert lock. Well, we found Shelia Holbrook's room. And we found Larry Dombrowski's room. Oh, whose room is this? It's currently being cleaned. Hmm. I wonder... If there's like a door that we can access the neighboring room. Bye. A sharp contrast from the crew quarters, is it not? If you have any little ones aboard, story time with Serena will be held in the ship's library this evening. 
This door is locked with a novice lock. The bathroom door is locked. If you have any needs, please enter a request into the computer located at the entryway to your cabin. Passenger Grayson Slate. Daddy, this is an absolute disaster. You never told me that I'd only be able to take one valet on this cruise. Imagine how it felt when I had to send the other three home at the Siren's departure station. You won't believe it, but I actually had to carry my own bag. Can you imagine the humiliation? Oh well, at least the food on board is halfway decent. The wine, however, disgusting. I think Trident neglected to hire a proper sommelier. Thank goodness I brought, bought a, I brought a few bottles from our cellars. Anyway, that's all for now. I guess I'll see you when this horror show is over. As always, your loving son, Hannibal. Oh, man. <laughs> he, I didn't ex... He said daddy. He, he said daddy. As an adult man. Okay, now, how the hell do you... How, how do you send this? Hello? Isn't this voice activated? No, you stupid thing. Stop printing what I'm unintelligible. This is preposterous. Send. Send. No. Send. You stupid piece of junk. Wait until my father hears about this. So now he's father, but a minute ago he was daddy. What's uh, going on there? All right, we got a safe. But it's empty. If you want to dine at Captain Rokoff's table during dinner service, it's only an additional 5,000 credits. Ooh, 5,000 credits. It's a lot of money. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Trident Luxury Lines, we wish to thank you for choosing to travel with us. Thank you for thanking me. We've got overlap here. And yet that's the only place that one can go. Which means this has to go there. Which means that and that. But, oh, okay, I see. I hope you can succeed at that before we are discovered. I did. Analgesic. Did you pick? I wonder if this is going to be important for the plot later on. All right, well, we got in without alerting security. Brian Dawkins says, Can we see story time with Selena in the ship's library? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we can find it, definitely. All right, so there was no way to get into Shelia Holbrook's room from the adjoining room. That was a bummer. I was kind of hoping we'd be able to do that. So, we could always pick it. That's always an option, and we do have plenty of digi picks, but I want to see if maybe we can con our way in using persuasion first. Wouldn't it be nice if she were to just give us a key? We can say, hey, I'm with the, uh, the concierge team. And uh, I need access to your room so I can put your bag away, you know, something like that. Right, I think that's everything. Before we dive into the Starview Ballroom, let's dive into here. If you wish to have a drink at any of our lounges, be sure to present your cabin pass to have the drink. Okay, are these rooms we have not yet seen yet? Claudia Swiss. I think we did see Claudia's room earlier. Or maybe not. Okay, so that's Trident. Did we go? We did. We just explored up here. Yeah, yeah, this leads to... 
Yeah, okay. So we've been up there. I think that's everything. I think that's it. All right, let's go through the main door into the ballroom. All right, I'm going to do a hard save here before we enter the ballroom. Because who knows what will happen. Crews run several times, and I can assure you that the route is quite safe. Please remain in designated passenger areas at all times. Have a safe journey. I swear my lighters hate me. Here for business or pleasure? Is there an open bar? I was told there'd be an open bar. Due to an unfortunate uh, accident, we are halting our spacewalk experience for an undetermined amount of time. Would that be the death of crewman uh, Kedman or whatever his name was? Kedley, something like that. Explorer power pack, a power boost pack. Wow. <clears throat> and it's better than anything I've got, except it doesn't have any legendary effects. Okay, we've got a downstairs and an upstairs. Let's finish exploring the upstairs Hello. first. Hello. Are you a member of the society? Oh, the yes. Society I certainly hope really they decide to hold all future some. society events aboard a Starliner. What can you tell me about the Terran Preservation Society? I'm a silver member of the society, but only 100,000 more credits and I hit the gold tier. Do you have any information regarding the Earth Savior Award? Well, apparently the award is so valuable, there's only one in existence. It gets passed to a new winner every year. And can we go through these over and over again until we get everything we want? It's a shame that the Earth ended in such a sorry state, but I'm glad the society has the nerve to do something about it. <laughs> yes, the society, and only the society, has the nerve to... Restore the atmosphere in the electromagnetic field around the Earth. Yeah. Do we really need to go over this again? Okay. You don't necessarily have to be wealthy to contribute, though the minimum donation level is 5,000 credits. It's critical that the society keeps the memories of Earth alive in our hearts. I'm doing my part by attending this spectacular event. Do you know anything about Larry Dombrowski? Dombrowski is married to some poor woman that he constantly leaves behind in New Atlantis when he goes on his business trips. Mm. Could we talk about something else? Sure. Donations to the society can be debited from my bank account on a monthly basis. I barely have to lift a finger to help. I already told you what I know. What, you think I'm lying? Okay. Yikes. So each patron only has one thing to say about Dombrowski and the Earth Savior Award, but plenty to say about the Terran Preservation Society. Is this about that feature SSNN ran a few years ago? I can assure you this is a legitimate charity organization. Enjoy the rest of the event. Quite a lovely Starliner. <laughs> Nothing but the best for the society, eh? I heard he uses Galbank's VIP suite on the Siren of the Stars almost monthly. Does the man ever do any real work? Hmm. 
I heard it's fitted with 12 internally flawless two carat blue diamonds. Mm. Can you believe that? <laughs> when you join, they send you a small chunk of rock from the earth itself. I keep mine on my desk. Oh, wow. Haven't we already talked about this? This topic is beginning to bore me. Can we talk about something different? The Society was founded about eight years ago by Carl S.A. Worthington, a prominent businessman from New Atlantis. Right. Nice to have met you. An open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. No open bar? Oh my god. Have you tried the canopies? Horrid. Positively horrid. We, we, were, we were warned about the canapes. Did he pronounce it canapes? Like as in a can of peas? It's canapes, isn't it? Larry likes to drop overly complex words into conversations. I'm sure he knows that it annoys people, but he does it anyway. Benjamin Bayou of Neon won the award the first time it was presented, but he dropped out of the society a couple of years back. <laughs> I wonder why. Not much, other than the fact that they host these wonderfully entertaining gala events every month. Besides what I already told you? No. I honestly don't really know anything else about the award. All right, so the game is training me <clears throat> to only ask them once about the primary quest topics. The society is such a worthy cause. What could be more important than the preservation of the Earth's spirit? Don't forget to donate to the cause. Yeah, maybe next time they'll have an open bar. Hello. Quick save. It's Shelia Holbrook. Hi, Shelia. Should I take a Hippolyta? Yes. I'm extremely busy preparing for the award ceremony, so this better be important. Kid. <laughs> Tony J says, Bethesda's view on rich people. Hmm, yes. Rich, rich, rich. I am rich. Money, 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 money. Caviar, monocle. Pretty much, yeah. That's, that's pretty much how they view all rich people. Okay, uh, when will the award ceremony occur? Probably in a few days. I don't want the award transfer to actually occur until we're safely in orbit at our destination. Of course, if I keep getting interrupted, the ceremony might never take place at all. Wow, this lady's a gem. Isn't it risky to hold the award ceremony aboard a Starliner? Not at all. I was assured that this particular ship was outfitted with the absolute latest in cutting-edge security. I am completely confident that Trident Luxury Lines will keep all of us safe. Okay, we could ask, we could say, I need your claim ID for the Earth Savior Award. Uh, <laughs> okay. Excuse me? <laughs> and why in goodness name would I do something as foolish as that? We can persuade her and and just, oh my God, the dialogue that we have to persuade her is just hand over the claim ID so I can be on my, my way. Really? Come on, Bethesda, give me something persuasive. Like, oh, I need to, uh, I need to dust your, your safe or I, you know, there's, there's a locker that needs a new pin or just something, not just, just give it to me I, just cause I'm asking for it. And why, in goodness' name, would I possibly agree to that ridiculous demand? Two, four, six. <clears throat> All right, it was more difficult to convince that one guy on Mars to not attack us than this, this one. This was this only a six. All right, so we've got two options. Uh, I promise this is just between us. I'd like to help you. I, I really would. Would you really, though? And there we get a five, finally, but it's one too many. You need to tell me what you know. We can try it. Nice try, but no. 
Okay, and so let's go for the four. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to push so hard. I just need this information, you understand. Okay, I get it. I just need a second to think. Oh, just take the damn thing already. Wow. Listen, maybe you can keep this between us. Wow. If the award goes missing, there's no need for the insurance company to get involved. Wow. I'm gobsmacked. I literally just asked her for a key to a safe with an invaluable award in it with no excuse. There's... There, there was no excuse. Like, Don't you have somewhere better to be? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Mm -hmm. Really. I'm sorry, but unless you're reporting a security situation, I need to get back to my duties. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Let's put it this way. He screwed over so many people, if he suddenly disappeared from the universe, I don't think anyone would miss him. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the award committee this year. The way she dotes over that glorified trophy, you'd think it was her own child. Yeah, but turns out it doesn't take much to get the key away from her, does it? It's critical that the society keeps the memories of Earth alive in our hearts. I'm doing my part by attending this spectacular event. Hmm. Well, that was boring. <laughs> That's great. I want more of that. I want more people ending a conversation with me going, man, I've had better talks. <laughs> that was great. So that view is absolutely spectacular, isn't it? Larry has an A-level executive rating over at Galbank, which means he has access to everyone's accounts at the touch of a button. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the award committee this year. The way she dotes over that glorified trophy, you'd think it was her own child. Okay, we're starting to get repeats here. It's a shame that the Earth ended in such a sorry state, but I'm glad the society has the nerve to do something about it. Okay, and we're starting to get repeats there as well. That's all then? Okay. That's all then. Hello. Are you a mem- That view is absolutely spectacular, isn't it? He's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality time, if you catch my meaning. I'm certain his uh, wife doesn't know a thing about it. Claudia Swist. Hey, 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 look at that. Finally, some interesting gossip. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the award committee this year. The way she dotes over that glorified trophy, you'd think it was her own child. All right, so officially we're getting um, duplicate repeats for that dialogue option, so we don't need to ask it anymore. Let's see if it's the same for the Terran Preservation Society. When you join, they send you a small chunk of rock from the Earth itself. I keep mine on my desk. Everyone keeps their little Earth rock on their desk, okay. Enjoy the rest of the event. So Dombrowski is having an affair. In the event of a lockdown, remember to return to your cabin in a quiet and orderly fashion. Hey, Rokov, you just enjoy the event. I'll go back to talking to you later. Here for business or pleasure? The society chair has really outdone herself this time. Jam and Cohen says, what do you mean starting to get repeats? Oh, you know, the rest of the crew has been repeating themselves for a while. I was talking about the patrons and these particular dialogue options. Mm, he's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality time, if you catch my meaning. There we go. I'm certain his wife doesn't know a thing about it. All right, I think we have exhausted all of the patron dialogue options. That's all then? Okay. Let's see if we can find this We Claudia have a Swist. range of excursions available at all of our destinations. All the details are in your cabin. All right, can I buy some booze? Due to an Unfortunate accident. We are halting our spacewalk experience. For I certainly an hope they decide to hold all future society events aboard a Starliner. A Starview pass is required to enter the main ballroom. Crate of exotic liqueurs. How do 
I close it now that I've opened it? Expert. Blah, blah, blah. No. Ah. Oh. Okay. Um. We could. Yup. And then. Uh, oh, almost. If that was reverse, that would be perfect. And that one's not going to work. Unless. That would work there, which would allow me to... Aha! It's reversed! Bingo. Probably shouldn't have done that. Probably shouldn't have done that. I think I've got myself in a jam here. Alright, top only. Okay. None. Bingo. How quickly? And it's not set to own. Refined old earth hunting rifle. Can you get that done? So, what brings you aboard? Well, I'm here to steal the cred sticks that are sitting on this table and they're not set to own. That's gotta Quite be an oversight. What a lovely Starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, eh? Okay. Pleased to make your acquaintance. There's no staircase? <coughs> There's no staircase down? Really? Oh, there if it is. If you have any specific requests, please speak to one of the crew's attendants. Wow. Okay. Don't forget to keep your Starview Pass handy at all times, or you won't have access to the ballroom. Don't worry, I'll keep it handy. Well, they don't mind if I come back here, do they? We have a range of excursions available at all of our destinations. All the details are in your cabin. A uh, deep core spacesuit. It's rare. It's not worth stealing. Okay, so this leads to the crew quarters. This is the back door that we found earlier. Now we know where they connect. That is great. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Trident Luxury Lines, we wish to thank you for choosing to travel with us. You're welcome. Oh, is that a helmet? Nope, it's a lamp. I love lamp. All right, before we go down, Let's see what's over here. Bathrooms. At the moment, Aurora isn't permitted on Trident Starliners, though we're working on having that changed. Wow, what happened over here? Quite a mess. Okay, down we go. Any here. complaints about your crews should be directed to one of the staff. We are finally on the party deck. What's this? Oh, that leads to the engineering deck. Have we been there? Hmm. 
Well, we need to trigger a lockdown. Maybe we can do that from the engineering deck. But let's finish exploring here first. The ship's purser can assist you with any matters regarding the security of your items. Please remember to obey all posted safety and mustering instructions. An open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. Have you tried the canopies? Horrid. Positively horrid. An open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging oh us for every God. credit we've got. Oh my God! What a lovely Starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, eh? Oh. I certainly hope they decide to hold all future society events aboard a Starliner. Mind Give moving along? Fella. I'm trying to enjoy the celebration. Sorry, I'm busy. Maybe we'll talk another time. Okay, Gabriel so Vera doesn't aboard? want to talk to us. Hello, are you a member of the society? VIP guests only, huh? <laughs> what are we gonna Have get Have you trouble? tried the canopies? Horrid. Positively horrid. Society Any complaints people? about your crews should be directed to one of the staff. If you have any need... Ugh, I just need a break. Change the Punk says the old hunting rifle was an odd choice for the game. In real life, it's a Russian military DMR that's not widely available to the civilization market. Well, perhaps this uh, exists in an alternate timeline, you know, where it was mass-produced or something like that. It's please enter a request into the computer located at the entryway to your cabin. Okay, VIP section in a second. Here for business or pleasure? That view is absolutely spectacular, isn't it? Okay. I'm sorry, but unless you're reporting a security situation, I need to get back to my duties. No, I'm a VIP guest. Don't forget guest. to keep your Starview Pass handy at all times, or you won't have access to the ballroom. Wow, it is a great view. Too bad the lights are reflecting off the glass. Okay. You must be Larry Dombrowski. I hear you're having an affair. I'm sorry. I don't believe we've met. Do I know you? <clears throat> we could say you don't know me, but you will. No, but I know you. Nope, you're not exactly the type of human being I can stand being near. Or we need to talk about some evidence I have discovered about you. Let's say you don't know me, but you will. My word. Is that supposed to be a veiled threat of some kind? I'm certain we've never been acquainted before, so I'll do you the courtesy of forewarning you about the impertinence that's to follow. When you approach me, I'd highly advise you to choose your words carefully. Otherwise, it's likely they will be your last. I think we're done here. Good day. <laughs> ah, we're speaking again. Lovely. I can't possibly think of anything I'd rather be doing at this very moment. <clears throat> we could say you're definitely into some shady stuff. Give me your gal bank credentials right now. You're not worth my time, or we need to talk about some evidence I discovered about you. Let's first ask for the gal bank credentials, and then when he says no, we'll say, well, I've got evidence against you. Have you taken leave of your senses? I will do nothing of the sort. Accost me again and I will ensure that you regret it for the rest of your miserably short life. But it looks like that's not the way the quest is designed. Ah, uh, we're speaking again. So we'll say evidence I discovered about you. No, I don't believe we'll be talking about anything of the sort. I'm not certain why you're approaching me with this harassment, but I can assure you that you've made a potentially life-threatening mistake. 
Perhaps you're unaware of the extent of my influence, or perhaps you're irrevocably stupid. I'll assume it's the latter and overlook it for now. You have no evidence, says Joanna. I have evidence he's having an affair. Maybe I need to find his affair partner first? The ship's purser can assist you with any matters regarding the wow, security of your Wow, look at items. all this money just Pleased sitting to make here. your acquaintance. <clears throat> I just don't want to steal a glass, because that would turn everyone hostile. Are you a member of the society? An open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. Okay, well I need to find his affair So partner. what brings you aboard? I certainly hope they decide to hold all future society events aboard a Starliner. But I can't seem to find her anywhere. She's not down here. If you have any specific requests, please speak to one of the crew's attendants. Huh. Kill Larry. Talk to Claudia Swist. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to speak to Claudia Swist. But I haven't been able to find her. Oh, wait, no. She was the one out, uh, standing outside, wasn't she? Yeah, she was the one standing outside. Please remain in designated pass. Wasn't she... Okay, so that leads to the safe. That means this one must if be If the Claudia rest of Swift. this ship is any indication, I imagine there is an incredible amount of wealth stored in there right now. There she is. Sorry, do I know you? Caden Shade says, what did one snowman say to the other? Huh, that's funny. I smell carrots too. Unfortunately, my glitched and I can't proceed this quest past this. Really, Caden Shade? I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, thankfully, I've got lots of, uh, of manual saves. We could say, yeah, you're in a hell of a lot of trouble. Or you don't know me, but I need some information. Or there's no harm in a friendly little chat between two people. Okay, wait, are you seriously... Uh, are you trying to pick me up? Look, uh, I appreciate the compliment, but I'm already seeing someone. And my partner doesn't like competition. He gets very jealous. We could say, would your partner happen to be Larry Dombrowski? Or I'll bet Gal Bank would love to know about your affair with Dombrowski. Or maybe I should talk to Larry Dombrowski's wife instead. Or I, all, I know all about your affair with Dombrowski. Let's try Larry Dombrowski's wife instead. His wife? Uh, oh, for the love of God. I told Larry to keep his big mouth shut, but did he listen? No. He had to impress his friends and treat me like a trophy. Look, I've been in this business for a long time, and I know how this game works, so let's skip all the banter and get it over with. What's it going to take to make us both happy? <clears throat> we could pay 2,500 credits. I give you cash. You give me Dombrowski on a platter. I need to think about this. Or are you willing to part with your gal bank credentials? You're not very bright, are you? I'm a grade C3 exec at Galbank. That means my credentials get me into two places. The front door and the ladies' room. If that's all you really want, you're certainly welcome to them. Or we can pass a persuade check. All I need is something incriminating on Dombrowski. If I give you dirt on that son of a bitch Dombrowski, all I'm doing is endangering myself. 
Why would I do that? We need to pass a six, <clears throat> and our Hippolyta has worn off. We could say the Crimson Fleet wants that information. <laughs> we probably don't want to let them know that it's the Crimson Fleet. Uh, why would that be more persuasive? Let's try this. That's true. You have come this far already. Well, I have information that could seriously damage your reputation. You know more about me than I suspected. Can't have that. <clears throat> Dombrowski has no way out of this. You might, if you cooperate. This is just gonna keep going until I give in, isn't it? All right, you've made your point. You know, this whole thing really pisses me off. Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out, and then he goes and flushes the whole thing down the toilet. I do not understand. Your anger is focused on Mr. Dombrowski, but clearly the failure of this plan rests on you as well. If you had to work near him day in and day out, I think you'd understand. He's a disgusting pig, plain and simple. You're the one having an affair with him. If you hate the guy so much, why were you defending him a moment ago? I didn't know who the hell you were. For all I knew, you were working for Dombrowski. It's called playing it cool. You should try it sometime. How many credits are we talking about? I'm not gonna tell you. Let's just say that I'd be sent to prison for a long time if Galbank figured it out. You're angrier at Dombrowski than I expected. Oh, angry isn't even the right word. The plan was solid. Larry got together with myself and this other guy, Gabriel Vera. Oh. He's some big wig over at UC Security. I doctored the transactions, Larry wiped them off the system, and Vera kept the legal pressure off of us. We were scamming Galbank for months. It was going well until I discovered Larry was cheating everyone by changing each transaction in his favor before deleting them. <laughs> you think he was using you? Oh, I know he was using me. At the same time, he was saying how much he loved me. He was stringing me along and stabbing me in the back. Why didn't you confront him? I was going to confront him back on Jemison, but then he invited me on this little trip through the stars. All expenses paid, first-class accommodations, the works. I figured, why not wait until I've milked him for every credit he's spending before I drop the hammer? Why aren't you worried I'll blow the whistle on this whole thing? <laughs> you won't do that. You're here because you've got some kind of side hustle in the works. If you wanted to blow the whistle, you would have boarded this ship with the authorities. If you want revenge, give me proof I can use against him. I wish I had some. Maybe you should try talking to Gabriel Vera. He should be around here somewhere. I know exactly. If he doesn't want to cooperate, just mention my name. That should grab his attention. Good luck. You're gonna need it. There we go. All right. <clears throat> what was Dombrowski and Vera's contribution to the Galbank scheme? What, are you writing a damn novel? <sighs> Fine. Vera works for UC Security, so he kept a lookout on their comnet for any Galbank chatter. I guess you could call him our early warning system. And Dombrowski made sure that all of the crypto manipulation I was working on didn't turn up in Galbank's automatic audits. You need top clearance for that kind of access, so we had to cut him in, whether we liked it or not. What exactly is going on between you and Dombrowski? What do you think is going on? I'm using that gullible idiot to get what I want. If I have to squash him on my way to the top, then so be it. Let's get one thing straight. Larry Dombrowski's no saint. He deserves everything that's coming to him. We could say honestly, I don't blame you one bit. I'm not here to judge, or you're sounding just as manipulative as Dombrowski. That is perhaps not the most helpful thing one could say right now, regardless of how true it may be. Where the hell do you get off judging me? You don't know that asshole like I do, okay? Dombrowski is a piece of human garbage. 
He'd stab you in the back for table scraps, then stab you again to steal dessert. The plan's always been to milk the guy for everything he's worth, and then leave him in the dust. Not bad for a lowly Galbank worker drone, right? Well, Andrea did not like that. <clears throat> I wonder if we can go through those dialogue options again and get a like out of her. What do you think is go? I'm using that go. Let's get one thing straight. We can now try. Honestly, I don't blame you one bit. Saints seem few and far between these days. Dombrowski is a piece of human garbage. He'd stab you in the back for table scraps. The plan's always been to mill. Not bad for a little. I didn't get a like out of her, so let's try the other option. What do you think is... I'm using that gull. Let's get one thing. I'm not here to judge. Yes, no judgment. But I am curious to hear a bit more. It doesn't matter if you're here to... Dombrowski is... The plan's always been... Not bad for a... What was your contribution to the Galbank scheme? I wrote a computer algorithm that basically creates a randomized number of false ghost credits that mimic the crypto key of actual credits. Then the algorithm simply passes the ghost credits to whatever legit transfers that the bank transacts. The genuine credits enter a dummy account. The best part is that I also alter the crypto keys as the real cash flows into our accounts. By the time it lands in our pockets, the creds are clean. So on paper, it appears that all of the bank's transactions are covered when it's really just our ghosted dummy creds. <laughs> Genius, right? Well, that- I hope you hurt Dombrowski. Nail his ass right to the wall. Well, that's the plan. I'm bummed that I actually got some um, dislike from her for that. Did I quick save just before then? I don't know if I did or not. That's the autosave. No, that's a while ago. That's over 10 minutes ago. Right, well, we need to talk to Vera, and we know exactly where he is. I've done this particular cruise run several times, and I can assure you that the route is quite safe. Have you tried the canopies? Horrid. Positively horrid. Hello. You here for the charity event? <clears throat> Do you often attend honest and worthy causes? Oh, absolutely. I'm a firm believer that attending these types of events tends to absolve one of their sins and cleanse their soul. <laughs> but something tells me you're not really here to discuss the event. What did you really want to talk about? Uh, we could say actually I'm here on business. Well, I work for UC Security, meaning that business isn't exactly my area of expertise. I'm afraid I can't really help you. If you're looking for a business opportunity, you might want to check with someone else. What exactly brings you aboard the Siren of the Stars? To be honest, I'm here to keep an eye on the charity event. It might not be as glamorous an assignment as a colony rescue or taking down some criminals, but anything that keeps the peace is important to me. What is this all about, anyway? What do you do for UC Security? You mean specifically? Oh, I work for the Corporate Fraud Division. We monitor all of the major megacorp financials and transactions to ensure that nothing improper occurs. You're asking a lot of strange questions. What exactly do you want? Claudia Swist says you have information about Larry Dumbaus Dombrowski. Claudia sent you, did she? Look, friend, I don't know if you're just a little drunk, maybe a touch crazy, or both. Whatever you think you know about me, you're dead wrong. So back off. We both know exactly who you are. Back off or what? Don't test me. You have no idea how high up the chain I am with UC Security. Not only can I make you disappear, I can also make sure the settled systems forget you existed in the first place. 
bigger you are, the harder you fall. We could say, fine, my mistake. We could say, you don't sound very worried about Claudia's calling you out, or maybe I'll hand any evidence I already have over to the authorities. Let's see, you don't sound very worried. Worried? Why should I be worried? Anything you try to report will boil down to your word against mine. And since I work for UC Security, who do you think people will believe? I mean, I am the hero of the Terror Morph thing, so maybe they'd believe me? I told you to stay out of my way. I meant it. Here. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. For business? We can still kill Larry. We need to steal the ES award or return to Evan G. Rokov. Hmm... Or a pleasure. I mean, that view is absolutely. His dialogue gives us the impression that we could hand in evidence against him. Here on out, I prefer you keep your distance. Maybe I've locked myself out. The society chair has Somehow. really outdone herself this time. In the event of a lockdown, remember to return to your cabin in a quiet and Right. The one place we haven't explored is engineering. Let's go do that really quickly. Quite a lovely Starliner. There's nothing quite like the view from the stuff you borrow. It's breathtaking. This is well maintained, to be sure, but obviously the credits have all been spent on the areas the guests actually see. Uh, hey, uh, uh, hold up. This area is off limits to passengers. Uh, hey, uh, uh, hold up. This area is off limits to passengers. Requires key. Okay, so this requires a key. Locked with a novice lock. Got overlap there. If that is, this only works on the bottom, but this is the only place for it to work. So what would it take? It would take this. No, it would take this. All right, so those two for the bottom, and these two for the top. Advanced Telmet, Star Roamer, Skip Pack. So 
So just loot back here, nothing related to the... Oh! Varun Heretic Writings! I mean... It's set to owned, so I'd have to steal it. Hello. Mech components, black market... Oh my god, a contraband case. I'm hidden. Wow, we just found a bunch of contraband. Okay, uh, so we've got a room up here that requires a key to get into. We can't do that on our own. We need to kill Dabrowski or somehow get his Galbank credentials without killing him. I'm not sure how we would do that. We need to get the star, the Earth star thing. We've got the key to her safe. But we need access to it. And we won't have access to it until the ship goes into lockdown. So I'm thinking... Please that we need remember to, to the obey captain. all posted safety and mustering instructions. Don't forget to keep your starving... But first... Now we could always pick the door to his his crew quarters. We haven't done that yet. Let's do a hard save here. Hallbrook claim ID. We could open the door, see what happens. Earth Savior Award. Okay, we've got the Earth Savior Award. One down, one to go. Uh, I wanna pick the room to Larry. I wanna pick the key to Larry's room to see if that's gonna give us another option. Uh, hold on here, this is a... Oh, but it's worse. It's not worth it. Robert says, hey Ox, you may have more dialogue with the captain. I may, but I want to see what I can do without resorting to that dialogue. I'll definitely go to him um, if I need to. But we have one final trick up our sleeves, and that's to hack into this door. This is Sheila Holbrooks. We don't need that anymore. We've already got the star. This is Larry Dombrowski. Let's see if this is going to give us the evidence we need. Profile. Uh, undetermined Deluxe. Please deliver one bottle of iced champagne daily at 23.30. If cabin unoccupied, leave next to the passenger bed in the silver ice bucket. Okay, top two. Middle. All. Top and bottom. Top and middle. Bottom middle. Wow, they don't give me anything exclusively for the top. Okay, so we'll sort the... Oh, I've got an auto slot here. Let me use that real quick. Okay, that narrows it down a bit.
And then I need... Okay. Which means... Whoops. That's what it was. Crap. We cannot just break it open. Okay. I wasted way too many digipicks on that, but I can go buy more. Let's see what we find here. And if nothing, then we'll go talk to Lukov or whatever his name is. Or maybe we go into his mistress's room. Race to the heavens. Oh! Up until the wide availability of steel, buildings rarely were over seven stories. The amount of structural support brick buildings needed to made, uh, needed made going over ten stories effectively impossible. In the early 20th centuries, the availability of industrial strength steel and advances in engineering design led to the dawn of the skyscraper. And then the race to the heavens was on. Eighty years after the first skyscrapers were built, techniques advanced so that a building in Dubai was fully doable, I'm sorry, was fully double the height of those early Goliaths. And the race to go higher, faster, was only beginning. Here are the stories and history of some of Earth's most impressive structures. Thus begins the architectural novel race, uh, novel Race to the Heavens, covering the stories of many of the greatest buildings on Earth. All right, go to Dubai. Yes, we just unlocked the Dubai landmark. Nicholas Nickleby, Great Expectations. Is that two copies of Nicholas Nickleby? It is. Another copy of Great Expectations. This guy really loves those two books. Kind of messy. Kind of a messy room for a guy like this, don't you think? There's the bottle. Chandra Cabernet Sauvignon. All right, bed chambers, Dracula. Man, they all love these pre-war books. Expert. Ugh. Jam and Cohen says you leveled up. Use the point for theft, so you have the option of pickpocketing. Or at least seeing what people have in their inventory. Uh, you're right. I don't know if I would use it for my own personal gameplay, but it's definitely useful for lore videos. Um, where would theft be? It would be in physical. No? Stealth. No? Where's theft? There it is. It's in social. Unlock the ability to pickpocket targets. So now I have that option if I need it.
All right, all right. Well, if they're not gonna give me, well, there it is. So that's a perfect Y. Uh, this is for the middle, great. If that goes there, then I need something like this. And that doesn't fit. It fits there, but what I need is one that fits there. So if I try that there, that gives us overlap. So, that's not where I need it. I need this. Nope, that also gives us overlap. So I need this. Yes. All right, so middle, middle. Top. Let's work on bottom. Yes, and yes. Canuck Double Double. Man, he loves his coffee. Wow, there's nothing. I'm not finding anything quest related in his chambers. We can try the bathroom. All right, so this is bottom only. That's gonna go there, which means we have to have this for that, which means these two are for the top. Or not. Yeah. I hope this is worth the effort. Did you pick? Right. Well, uh, we can try sh uh, his mistress's room. Sheila Holbrook, that's the wrong room. Okay, where's his mistress's room? It's gotta be around, around the bend. Then that one was under construction or being cleaned. So then the other one must be... There. Oh my god, why am I finding the same one? Where's the other one? Alright, well, let's go talk to the guy. Unless it was on another level, yeah. Claudia Swist. There it is. But I'm detected. That's right, because she's right there. Quick save. Ooh. All right, so the, that one could be used for the middle ring. This one could be used for the middle ring as well. 
Those two can only be used for the middle ring. If we use those, then it's a completely different one. That would be used there. Or that could be used there. Middle or bottom. If we use that on the bottom ring, and then that can be used there. So we've got two different ways of solving both the middle and the top rings. Or middle and the bottom rings. So we need something that works for the top that's going to be this. And then we'll have to use one of these for the top. Then uh, if we do this one, we can do that. We're in. Nicholas Nickleby, Great Expectations. Nicholas Nickleby, wow, they really enjoy the same books. Lots of clothing. Oh man, it's not looking promising. My darling Claudia, yesterday was amazing. The restaurant was exquisite and you looked beautiful. And after dinner, the night we spent together was unforgettable. You know I'd do anything for you. All you have to do is ask. I yearn for us to be together forever. I intend to break things off with my wife and leave that part of my life behind. Be patient, my darling. I'll tell her soon. I promise I love you now and forever. Larry. Ha! Ah! Well, that doesn't update the quest log, however. So it may be that we've missed our opportunity to use that evidence against him. Okay, that's got to be there. In which case, that would go there. That also is for the uh, middle one only. This is for the bottom one only. That would go there, in which case that would go there. So we need to sort the top. And that's tricky because that works for the top. There we go, and that works for the top. Bingo. I could not accomplish that. Well, I think uh, by choosing some of the dialogue options that I did a bit too prematurely, I might have locked myself out of using this evidence against Larry. But just to make sure, I want to run back to Larry now that I've got something in my hands and talk to him about the affair. Directed to one of the staff. Please remain in designated passenger areas at all times. Have a safe journey. Please to make your acquaintance. If you have any specific requests, please We've spoken speak to enough. One of the crew's attendants. Good day. Please to make your acquaintance. It's as I feared. I saw your little exchange with Vera. Keep that up, and I guarantee that imbecile's gonna demand that you be arrested. Does he actually have the authority to have me arrested? Oh, absolutely. 
He's up the ladder at UC Security. Lots of pull. We have to handle this very delicately. Um, he's involved in an embezzlement scheme with Dombrowski and Swist. Which is why he's threatening you. That makes sense. We need hard evidence of their scheme. But it's gonna be tricky. The problem is he's not gonna talk to you in public. We need to get Vera isolated so he'll spill everything he knows. There we go. We could say, shouldn't I just kill Vera and be done with it? If we ask that, is she's... I don't want to risk it. I don't want to lose affinity with them. Um, Andrea, so we'll say, shouldn't we wait until he returns to his cabin and falls asleep? Maybe, but if something goes wrong and he's able to raise an alarm, we're sunk. With all of these wealthy patrons aboard, the ship is crawling with security. A ship-wide emergency might do the trick. Smart. If there's an emergency, standard practice is for all passengers to clear the decks and report to their cabins for lockdown. I think the best chance we have would be to temper with the life support sensors. Manipulate a few controls and you can fool the monitoring system into thinking there's a, a life support failure. And there you have your emergency. Won't the ship be at risk without life support? This is one of Trident's premier starliners. That means it has the best of everything. Including a triple redundancy life support system. They installed a backup with a backup. Luckily for us, it will still trip an emergency and everyone will have to return to their quarters until I sound the all clear. Which I won't. Okay. We could say, you're crazy. I'm not qualified to be tampering with the ship's life support system. Or I guess I'll do whatever it takes to get it done. Your lack of commitment does not exactly fill me with confidence. Are you sure this is a good idea? Don't worry. It'll be as easy as it was mingling with the guests at the party. Just throw a few lousy switches and you're done. One more thing. If Chief Engineer Sandin gives you any trouble, tell him... I'll erase that gambling debt he owes me. I prefer you use that as a last resort, but hey, what's the harm in losing a few credits when I'm on the brink of rejoining the fleet, right? Anyway, I better start backing. Things are getting hot around here, and won't be long before Trident figures out you had help. Wow. Andresia just hates everything I do. Do you have the lowdown on Gabriel Vera? On the surface, he's an upstanding citizen of the United Colonies, pretty high up in UC security. Lots of clout with mast. Underneath, he's a greedy piece of garbage. Given the chance, he'd backstab you for a cred stick and pin the murder on someone else. Come to think of it, if he wasn't such a petty tyrant, he'd probably thrive with the Crimson Fleet. Where exactly is the life support system? There's access to the crew section that you can reach through the uh, Starview Ballroom. Chief Sundin should be there, wasting time at his station as usual. Have fun with that guy, he's a, a real piece of work. Once you're past Sundin, just look for the room marked Environmental Control. Everything you need is inside. Once the emergency is sounded, how does the ship's lockdown work? All passengers are instructed to immediately report to their cabins. That way we keep the halls clear and avoid a panic. Fortunately for us, all of the passenger cabin doors will automatically unlock. Ah, I wasted all This of is it. normally to ensure the crew can <laughs> check cabins quickly and without interference. But in our case, it's like having an all-access pass. <laughs> and here I picked all those locks. Okay. Don't you have somewhere to be? I do. The ship's purser can assist you with any matters regarding the security of your items. So, what brings you aboard? I certainly hope they decide to hold all of the future society.
Well, I guess we've got to clear the gambling debt. Uh, hey, uh, uh, hold up. This area is off limits to passengers. Wait a second. You're Captain Rokov's guest, right? Didn't expect to see you down here. Sorry to give you trouble. What can I do for you? Kind of lonely down here, isn't it? Yeah, a little. A few of the techs call this deck the dungeon. <laughs> I think you can see why. Not exactly Starliner-class comfort down here. Don't get me wrong. The quiet gives me time to gather my thoughts, catch up on work, and all that, but I'd rather work on the bridge. So, what do you do around here? I'm the Siren's chief engineer. Trident put me in charge of the entire tech team. We do our best to keep the ship running smoothly and efficiently. Of course, this beauty is a cutting-edge piece of spacecraft design. Almost everything has triple redundancy, like the life support system. Unfortunately, that means there's quite a bit of downtime. Could be worse, though, right? I really need to get into the life support area. Oh, uh, sorry, that area's off limits. No exceptions. We could pay a thousand credits. Maybe this will change your mind. We could say Captain Rokov said he's willing to forgive your gambling debt. Or we could say I'm the captain's guest, but you can't let me into that room. No, sorry, I'm afraid it's impossible. Trident regulations strictly prohibit anyone from entering the life support area without a valid reason. Look, I'm not trying to be a jerk here, it's just that I could lose my job, you know? Well, do we, uh, we don't, e we don't even know how much, uh, money this guy owed Captain Rokov. But it's probably around a, th a thousand credits. I'll just pay a thousand credits and say maybe this will change your mind. Hey, if your heart's set on it, who am I to stop you from staring at a bunch of life support machinery? Tell you what, right. I'm just going to step out for a bit and stretch my legs. Maybe you can hold this for me while I'm away. And I got the station ID. What do you think of Captain Rokov? Honestly, he's a seasoned ship captain. He told me he was a long hauler for years and the experience shows. Only thing is, he's always talking about trade deals and plans for get rich quick schemes. It's all the guy ever thinks about. Why he decided to be a Starliner captain, I'll never know. It's almost like he craves being around money. Tell you what though, for someone that loves credit so much, he sure doesn't mind gambling them when we play cards. <laughs> uh, we can again ask, kind of lonely in the environmental control, isn't it? I wonder if it's going to be the same response. Yeah, a little. A few of the techs call it this. Is. Don't get me wrong. So what's your role on the Siren of the Stars? We already know this. I'm the Siren's chief engineer. Trident put me in charge of the entire tech team. We do our best to keep the ship running smoothly and efficiently. Of course, this beauty is a cutting-edge piece of spacecraft design. We already went Almost through everything this, right? has trip. Unfortunately, that means that. Yep. Okay. Whatever you do, don't break anything, or I'll be out of a job. A job? Don't worry, I'll protect your job. Go yog that way. He's yogging everybody. Yog, yog, yog. All right, emergency procedures in the event of an alpha life support failure, beta will automatically activate. In the highly unlikely event that beta has failed, gamma will automatically activate. If a catastrophic failure has occurred and all three units are offline, an automated order to deploy environment suits will be broadcast throughout the ship. Please contact the chief engineer on duty for further details or refer to section 20 in the Trident Operations Manual. Lockdown procedures. If any life support unit fails, an automated emergency lockdown procedure will be placed immediately into effect. Actually, I think we already read this. We did. All right, so life support access. Open life support access. Check. For safety reasons, life support access cannot be sealed without approval from the chief engineer on duty. See Trident Operations Manual, blah, 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 for details. Okay, lots of buttons here. Reset switch. 
Reset switch. Okay, let's try it this one. Do we need to do all of them? Okay. All passengers, may I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. And there we go, it's clear. <laughs> Much nicer in here now. Plenty of room. She does not like being around people. Hey, Vera! Time for a chit chat. All passengers are being asked to return to their cabins at this time. That means me. Okay, I'm on my way. There's no cause for alarm. I'm sure this is just a minor malfunction or drill. There's Vera. Siren of the Stars is now in emergency status. Please remain calm and proceed to your cabin. And that was Claudia Swist. We already went into hers. Are there any others down here that we haven't been into yet? No. All passengers, suit. may I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. I was wondering if you were the cause of the ship-wide emergency. It's time you stop playing games and tell me why you're here. How did you know I was responsible for the emergency? Doesn't take a genius to deduce you're the one that's responsible. I locked on to you from the moment you entered the ballroom, and I've watched you trying to clock Dombrowski. After we spoke, I had a feeling you'd pull a stunt like this. So we could say I want everything you have on Dombrowski, or I want, I want you to help me take down um, Dombrowski. We could pass a UC SysDef check to say I'm undercover with SysDef, and I need everything you've got on Dombrowski, but we already know he's corrupt, so we don't want him knowing that. So instead, we can try to pass a Crimson Fleet check to say Dombrowski has something that the Crimson Fleet wants. But should we let him know that we're with the Crimson Fleet? Especially if we're going to let him live. Are you going to say something or what? Let's try this one. I want everything you have All passengers, on Zombrowski. May I have your attention, please? Gosh, that's loud. The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. Okay. First of all, you're in no position to demand anything. And second, you must think I'm stupid. There's no way I'd possibly incriminate myself by handing over the evidence. We could attack. Let's see, you already have evidence prepared? Don't act so surprised. You didn't really think I'd make a deal with Claudio or Dombrowski without having a little insurance policy of my own, did you? Huh? If I've learned anything in my years at the corporate fraud division, it's always have an exit strategy. 
We could say Dombrowski has been playing you and Claudia the entire time, or Claudia says you've been cheated out of your fair share of the Galbank job by Dombrowski. Let's do both of, I mean, either of these options should work. Claudia said that. You sure? Damn it. That means my money's already gone. And Dombrowski's going to walk away with a fortune. I'd love to see the bastard fry. But if I give you that information and it falls into the wrong hands, I could end up in jail. We got attack. <laughs> Before I make any deals, you mind telling me what I'm buying? Oh, I've got everything you're going to need. This is a one-stop shop for you. We're talking a slate loaded with dates, account numbers, ID scans, even an audio recording. <laughs> it was my little insurance policy in case the shit hit the fan. There's a solid enough trail the here to send Dombrowski straight to jail. Emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. Why did you let Dombrowski handle all the numbers in the first place? Dombrowski had the authorization to wipe out records on Galbank's system without raising any red flags. I let Claudia talk me into that. She said she had him wrapped around her finger. Apparently, she was wrong. Well, we could attack, but the only other option, sadly there's no persuasion option, is to pay 2,500 credits and say, I'll pay you to offset your losses. At least I walk away with something. All right, you have yourself a deal. Here, with this slate and this recording to tie it all together, you'll be able to nail his ass to the wall. He'll do whatever you want. Just remember that you promised to leave me out of it. I did. So what are you going to do about Swist and Dombrowski? Well, since Claudia has been spending time disgustingly close to Dombrowski, I think she's suffered enough. <laughs> On the other hand, I've got very, very special plans for Larry. I have some friends that can, well, let's just say, take care of the problem. That's if you leave him alive, of course. We'll just have to wait and see. Do you know Anything, uh, let's see, if, if we ask these questions, are we going to tip our hand? I'm All curious. passengers, I may I have tell your Dombrowski attention, to run, please? Because if you don't the kill him, has declared I a will. Ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive oh, further instructions. So loud. I am curious about what he would say to that, but not curious enough to risk blowing my cover. Okay, let's uh, go to Lombrowski's cabin. This ship is in a state of emergency. Please return to your cabin. Our security team would appreciate if you'd please shelter in your cabin during this emergency. Thank you. But this is the only private cabin we haven't explored. She's a gem. Chief Engineer Sandin's ID unlocks this door? Okay. She loves her chunks. Cake chunks. <laughs> what is this? What is this? What is going on? What is all this? <laughs> I, I don't even understand what I'm looking at there. This is fancy. She's got the best suite. It's multiple levels. Wow. Mannequins everywhere. Cake chunks. Story of the heavens. Have we read that one yet? All passengers, may I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide Jacketed leatherware. Emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. I think we have read Story of the Heavens. But just in case. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yep. I suppose that is ours now. Hey? Hey. Well, we could steal a bunch of outfits from her, but I don't think it's worth it. Mark says the award is in the safe. I already have the award. Earth Savior Award. It's right there. Our security team would appreciate if you'd please shelter in your cabin during this emergency. Thank you. Quick save. Archpixel says it doesn't blow your cover talking to that guy. All right, well, I'm far away from him now. All right, before, we, we already looted his place, so let's talk. Well, well. You must be the one who's been accosting Claudia and Gabriel. I'm uncertain what you hope to accomplish here, but it appears we should rapidly enter into some sort of negotiation. We could attack. No deals this time, Lombrowski. Or how did you know I was involved? All passengers. You don't actually believe that I'd venture into such please. precarious criminal territory without a proper bird's eye view of the situation, please do you? I'm uncertain why you've become entangled in the spider's web, but this situation demands swift and resolute action. We could say there isn't going to be a negotiation, or fine, let's negotiate. Excellent, excellent. So, before we begin, let's review the facts. First, it's clear that you've obtained insider knowledge of my arrangement to defraud Galbank. The means and the method, perhaps, but not the motive. And second, I'm going to hypothesize that my compatriots are despondent regarding their share and have assisted you with this endeavor, hmm? Since we're speaking and I'm not at the reporting end of a bullet, this leads me to conclude that you desire something personal from me. Good job, Hercule. <clears throat> is it really necessary for you to talk that way? <laughs> you may as well ask, is it necessary for the sun to set on Jemison or for one to wear a pressure suit when entering the vacuum of space? We could say I haven't entirely ruled out the bullet option yet. Or hang on, I need to get a thesaurus to understand what you're saying. Or that's an amazing trick, Professor. Let's say I haven't actually ruled out the bullet yet. I see. Well, that certainly places a damper on our negotiations. Perhaps I can hasten my diatribe to temper your violence-ridden contribution. May I have your attention, In blunt please. terms... You have compromising materials about me in your possession. The only thing I have to offer in return are my gal bank credentials. I assume that's what you've been angling for all along? Will there be much more of this? My head is starting to hurt. <laughs> how do you know you won't report... Uh, how do I know you won't report your credentials stolen? Well, I'm surprised you even posed that question at all. The answer is quite obvious. The last thing I'd want to do at this point is call attention to myself. You don't mind turning over your credentials to me? Obviously that wouldn't be my preference, but I have little choice. Hmm? Though Larry Dombrowski will be mysteriously vanishing after this cruise and possession of the credentials becomes ludicrous at that point. We could say, I'm surprised you figured that out, or yes, that's all I want. Splendid. It appears we've reached an accord. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me simplify that for you. It sounds like we have a deal. He spoke that very slowly. Oh, of course, I trust you'll understand if I ask for us to avoid any further contact. Now, if you'll excuse me, 
I need to formulate how I'm going to utterly ruin two very annoying business associates. Good day. And we got the gal bank credentials and the transaction. All passengers, may I have? Oh, that's just so annoying. All right, gal bank credentials. There it is. Change the punk says, hey, Ox, I don't know if you're aware, but there is an emergency lockdown situation. I know it's a hush-hush thing, but thought I'd let you know. Thanks, yes, I, I, I didn't hear about that. You know, they should, they should come on the PA or something and let people on the ship know if there's going to be an emergency lockdown. Just being so quiet about it, it's just, you know. Your reckless. attention, please. Reckless. The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. I'm sure please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion. And remain there until you receive the further instructions. Status. Please remain calm and proceed to your cabin. Well, well, well. Well, looks like everything worked out. Just like we planned. I got what I wanted. I'm the one that took all the risks, or I couldn't have done this without your help. I'm glad you feel that way. Just remember to tell Delgado how much I pitched in to help. You know, I'm still wondering exactly what you needed those credentials for. You feel like telling me, partner? You mean you haven't figured it out on your own? I usually have a nose for these things, but in your case, it's a mystery. Very frustrating. Whatever the case may be, it it's apparently worth risking your life over. That's telling me it involves uh, a lot of money. That also means I want in. We could say that we're hunting down Crix's legacy. We could say, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Or we could say, I want to tell you, but Delgado would kill me if I did. Ah, so he told you to keep it from me. I see. I wouldn't want you to risk your position with the fleet like I did, so I'll just leave it alone. Anyway, I suppose there's nothing stopping me from rejoining the fleet now. It's been a long time coming. All passengers, I owe you one. May Go I have this. your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. What did you call me? Tovarich? Don't worry, it's not an insult. It's a very old Russian word for comrade. It's what I intend to call you from now on, so get used to it. You're damned right you do, or I only accept thanks in the form of credits, or don't worry about it. Nonsense. If there's one universal constant you can depend on, it's that Yevgeny Rokov always makes good on his deals. Always. Well, I suppose this is where we part company. Hopefully the next time we meet, we'll be aboard the key. Not a bad guy. Too bad he wants to join the Crimson Fleet. Kind of feels sad that we're going to have to, you know, destroy him eventually. This ship is in a state of emergency. Please return to your cabin immediately. Right. Uh, it's up there. So I guess we go this way. Well, I think I did... No. I suppose we got... No. No, it's over there. Just... Alright. Well, I think we made the right choice. I need to pack up and get out of here. Every step of the way. Now? My only concern is I'm beginning to regret telling him about the eye of the All star passengers are being asked to return to their called. cabins at this time. I wonder if that's gonna bite me in the butt later. All passengers, may I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. And there we go. Quiet. Just peace and quiet. If my crew starts talking now, I'm done. Just no.
we've detached. Let's get out of here. Alright, so there's the Siren of the Stars. I wonder if we'll ever be able to go back. There's the UC Vigilance. We could go turn in the uh, data that we've got. We're right there, might as well. We only got one piece of evidence. I have something to give you. When you've got a moment. You do? Really? Alright. And you didn't even scratch the paint. got something for me? If you Thank want you. help, I'm here. What's good, Cup? Was it you? What's up? Do you have anything interesting for me, Jessamine? Been waiting for you to ask. Take a look at this. 320 credits. All right, Jessamine. Looking swell today, Cup. Mind if I ask you some personal questions? Thought you'd never ask, Cup. Where are you originally from? Gagarin Landing. Your average dead in mining town. Economy's crap, planet's hostile, locals don't like strangers. You get the drill. Not exactly New Atlantis. I grew up on the street with a handful of other orphans. We got by on pickpocketing and scamming passing pilots at the local market. Wasn't that a bad life, really? Street living was tough, but I liked it there. My gang and I had lots of good times. If the smuggling bug hadn't bitten me, I might have grown old on Gagarin. Will you tell me more about your gang? They're the finest group of vagabonds in the settled systems. None of us had stable families, so we stuck together on the streets for safety. Some left when we grew up, but those of us who hung around became the terror of Gagarin. By the time we were teenagers, there wasn't a clean record among us. We drove security mad for years between the stealing, the vandalism, and the griffs we pulled off. <laughs> Good times. Mind if I ask what's on your criminal record? Not a bit. A record's a badge of honor for a girl like me, Cap. Security's booked me for petty theft, vandalism, and attempting to sell contraband. Never done hard time, though. A few weeks in jail, nothing serious. My gang drew the line at violent crime, so we mostly avoided hefty sentences. Are there any of them still in Gargarin? Yeah, they are. Some stuck with a life of crime, but a few turned legit and opened businesses, or got jobs for the corporations that moved to town recently. Not my bag, but I don't hold it against them. Well, it's good to know that her crew never did violent crimes. We could say probably not such good times for the people you were stealing from, or with a history like that, it's no wonder you ended up as a professional criminal, or we can pass a neon street rat check to say your experience on the street sounds a lot different than mine. Sorry to hear that, Cap. I've seen enough of the settled systems to know I hit the jackpot as far as a childhood on the streets goes. I wish you had too. Do you have any idea what happened to your parents? Nope, not a clue. They left me in a box outside Chunks when I was a baby and haven't tried to find me since. God. They didn't even bother to give me a name. People just called me kiddo until I was old enough to pick something different. Have you ever thought about moving back? Sure, might retire there someday. But that's a long ways off. I'll make do with the occasional visit for the time being. I bet you'd have fewer enemies if you'd stayed in Gagarin, or it doesn't sound like the kind of place most people would want to grow old. Let's try that. Gagarin's an acquired taste, I'll give you that. That's what I like about it. How long have you been a smuggler? Been a while now since I got into the business. 
First hopped in a Trade Authority ship at 18 and I've been working the space lanes ever since. I was lucky enough to work with one of the best smugglers in the galaxy right from the get-go. We made tons of credits scamming and running contraband together. She retired a couple years back and passed her operation on to me. Been flying solo since. Not nearly as much fun, but I, I make do all right without her. Did she pass on her enemies to you? She did, but I made plenty of my own too. Caitlin's too smart to get wrapped up in a mess like I'm in with the zealots. She'd kick my arse if she found out. What types of good did you typically smuggle? Mainly drugs and contraband tech. My partner Caitlin also had a thing for Earth antiquities. Books especially. When we could get our hands on the real thing, we sold them to collectors who were rich and powerful enough to keep law enforcement's eyes off our operation. When we couldn't get real ones, we forged them. Caitlin was great at it. We ran that scam for years and never got found out. Hey, Cap! You in there? Uh, would you tell me more about your smuggling partner? Oh, Caitlin's got a real interesting story. She comes from a rich family and her parents had a thing for collecting ancient art. She was set to inherit a fortune when she grew up, but life with a silver spoon didn't suit her. She ran away from home as a teenager to start smuggling. Knowing her now, you'd never guess she came from money. She's as rough around the edges as I am, but she never lost her taste for expensive stuff from Earth. What kinds of things from Earth did she collect? She has a large book collection. Her prized possession was a book called Paradise Lost that she came across by chance in Aquila City. Personally, I never got through more than a few pages, but to each their own. She insisted it was brilliant, and she's a hell of a lot smarter than me. How did the two of you meet? <laughs> I tried to scam her. Some buds and I used to steal cargo from the Gagarin spaceport and sell it back to its owner for a higher price. Most people fell for it, but not her. Instead of a handful of credits, she showed up to meet us with two armed spacers to demand her goods back for free. I stepped in to negotiate, got them to drop the guns, and even managed a few credits for the stuff. Caitlin was so impressed, she offered me a job on the spot. Okay, uh, I need to step away for just a second. I will be right back. Hang tight, everybody. Trying to read my mind, eh? <laughs> Good luck. Not much going on in there. Okay, thanks for your patience, everybody. I'm back. To finish off our conversation with her, we could say, 
It seems like the two of you got along well, or it's hard to believe anyone would leave a life like that behind for smuggling. Let's say yeah, it seems like the two of you got along well. She's like a big sister to me. I wouldn't trade her for anything. It's too bad she retired before you had a chance to meet her. I think you'd get on well. Oh, <laughs> jeez, listen to me going on. All this reminiscing's got me feeling like a real sap. We could say, I don't think that kind of life would be for me, or sounds like a pretty exciting life. It was. Damn good thing this job turned out to be a decent substitute. I might have split by now if it wasn't, Varun zealots or not. Anything else you wanted to ask me? I've missed small talk. I could do this all day. <laughs> How did you end up with Varun zealots on your tail? Bad call on my part, honestly. I ran into a group of them at a spaceport and thought I'd try my hand at stealing some stuff from one of their ships. House Varun's stuff sells for a pretty penny to the right people, but it's hard to come by. The zealots caught me red-handed and chased me out of town. They've been on my tail ever since. Can't go a week without getting shot at. That's why I was hanging at the quay when we met. Only place I felt safe, really. Do you ever think they'll give up? Tch, doubt it. The zealots are unforgiving to say the least. Guess that means you're stuck with me, eh? Why is that? Is the Crimson Fleet not a fan of them either? Cap, no one's a fan of those nut jobs. I don't know many spacers who could survive a close encounter with a Varun ship. They're lethal. Most people who hang out at the last Nova walk around armed, that's all. Figured that would give me a better shot at survival if the Zealots came calling. Do you know anything about what the Varun Zealots believe? Only stories. I've heard they're a religious cult that worships something called the Great Serpent. It's supposed to live in the stars or something. Their leader's supposed to have drained the whole thing up during a grav jump. Guess he had some hallucination where the Great Serpent spoke to him. Hmm. Don't know if any of that's true, though. No one I know's had a conversation with one of them. It's uh, interesting that um, our companion here doesn't have anything to say about this particular conversation. We could say, I think we could take him, or we'll still steer clear of them if I can help it. Glad you've got your head screwed on straight. None of their stuff's worth the trouble of getting it. Even for a pack rat like you. Ha! Ah, she knows me! Better to leave well enough alone. Now let's talk about something else. My skin's starting to crawl. That's all. We should do this again sometime. All right. Let's go turn this evidence into Sisdef. Cannot wait to see how the UC is throwing its weight around today. Scott Hollis says, remember, you have contraband. Oh, yeah. Well, I seem to be okay. I'll make it, I'll do a beeline to the wolf system as soon as possible. After I turn in this evidence. They're not going to scan me going upstairs, are they? I don't think so. Orders came down. Some new science division policy. Everyone on boards to look out for heat leeches. Consider yourself informed. Yes? The commander appreciates the sacrifice you've made. Going undercover. I have evidence for you. Hmm. Glad to hear it. Let's see what you got. Uh, got this piece of information on a certain Galbank employee who was aboard the Siren of the Stars. Are you kidding me? Dombrowski was already making a six-figure salary, and yet he couldn't resist starting an embezzlement scheme. It makes me sick. Ah, oh, it's gonna be an absolute pleasure to throw <laughs> his butt in prison. Find anything else? Uh, do we want to turn him in? I mean, he did murder somebody on, on board the ship by pushing him out an airlock on the orders of the Crimson Fleet, so yeah. Found some evidence about Evenji Rokov. Tisk tisk. Looks like Mr. Rokov lied on his application to Trident Luxury Lines about having a clean record. No matter. Next time he jumps from the key, we'll have him picked up. That will be one less fleet captain for us to worry about. Anything else? She's talking about him as if he's already a captain. That's all for now. All right. Keep up the good work. 
Okay, and looks like we haven't... There we go. We, we unlocked a new piece of dialogue from her. You feel like telling me how your time in the well relates to your past experiences with the Crimson Fleet? Yeah. I figured it was only a matter of time before this came up. The reason I didn't bring up the Crimson Fleet is... Well... I was one of them. Oh! It's something I'm not exactly proud of. Well, well. Does Commander Akande know about this? He knows quite a bit about my journey. But I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention this conversation to him. Is that why you're so good at monitoring the Crimson Fleet? I know a great deal about how they operate, what frequencies they use, their encryption techniques, their methods. So, in short, yes. We could say, and not exactly something you want to shout from the mountaintops, or this just keeps getting better and better, or so we share common ground. <laughs> Let's try this one. Right. No one else but you would understand what I've gone through. It's been a long and difficult road. I was recruited out of New Atlantis by Neva Mora. She said I was making a name for myself, and it caught the fleet's attention. I was thrilled. It was a chance at bigger and better scores and gave me a ticket off world. Why the heck would I say no? Why did Neva choose you? I raised hell on New Atlantis until someone stood up and took notice. And just like Adler Kemp stuck his neck out and vouched for you, someone else in the fleet did the same thing for me. In fact, it was my idea to send you to Sidonia for your first, well, I suppose you call it a mission. I doubt you had no choice. You could have walked away, or let me guess, Neva dangled credits in your face. Of course she did. How else would you get an aspiring criminal to blindly follow you into a life of interstellar crime? They took me in. Delgado ran me through the paces on Suvorov, and before I knew it, I was part of the team. Now I was making some serious money. An apartment I boasted about in New Atlantis became a joke. I even made enough to buy my own ship. What happened when Delgado brought you down to Suvorov? What do you think? It's a giant ice ball. I froze my behind off. We spent a while exploring the surface near the lock while Delgado laid out his spiel about honor among thieves and all that nonsense. Never got a look inside the facility like you did. Sounds like you were living your best life. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm not exactly seeing the moral of the story here. Let's say, waiting for the shoe to drop. Oh, it dropped. Hard. Everything changed thanks to Commander Akande. The man basically saved my life. I owe him everything. Well, what did he do? He must have had his reasons. He seems to have a knack for changing people's lives. Hearing that makes me feel better about placing my life in his hands. Let's try that. If I've learned one thing about the Commander, it's that he cares deeply about everyone under his command. Look, um... I've already said too much. I promised Commander Akande I wouldn't talk to anyone about this. All you need to take away is that I've literally walked a mile in your shoes, and I appreciate the risks that you're taking. Carry through with this mission. I promise you I'll be there every step of the way. Okay. Thank you, Lieutenant Toft. Let me know if you need anything else. Right. Okay. Hello. And we seem to have gotten away with having contraband on our person. Let's hightail it to the wolf system to get this, to get rid of all of this. Normalizing. Uh okay, Wolf is uh there. Docking complete. Or go to the key. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> That's right. 
forgot. Yeah, I, I'm in a habit. I'm so used well, to going to the dance. You didn't put us into a planet, so we must be in the right place. Well, since we're here, we're just gonna take care of it here. Integrity looks good. Making this quick. If you're ever in New Atlantis, if there's anything I'm I can do for you, please for say the word. You I won't find a better offer on the station. Go to sell, go to miscellaneous, and boom, 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 boom. Oh my god. <laughs> We've got too much. Uh, yikes. And we've exhausted their inventory. Okay. I'm through. Well, it's a good thing we've got the key to go to. There. Why do we need to go to Alpha Centauri? I've acquired Larry Dump. Oh, right. We need to go wrap things up with Rokov to get to the Galbank archives. I see. Well, I still have, uh, all right, I need to go to the key anyway. <clears throat> yeah, if I go to New Atlantis now, I'm gonna get in trouble. I mean, I do have shielded inventory, but... That's not always a 100%, is it? There's always a chance. Grab drive spinning down. Systems green. Sarah, you are just so chatty there about literally are a good many everything places I'm doing. I would rather be right now. Okay. Next time you see Bog, tell the light though. I collected so much contraband on that that stuff. You wanna station. kick back? Avoid the last Nova. Now ah, you buy from me, you can look good, and well, only the best protected. He's got to sell, and he's got six thousand to barter with. Uh, we can get rid of mech components and the Varun Heretics writings. Nice. Let's sell these and buy them back. Is there anything else that's stolen that I need to cleanse? Yeah, story of the heavens. Whoops. The right gear can be the difference between life or death. Crap, now I can't buy it back. Oh, man. Oh, well, let's just go to Miscellaneous and get his Digipix. I think I already have one of these. See ya. Okay, we are cleansed.
Man of Warp says, speaking of contraband, have you found the bikini outfit yet? <laughs> uh, yeah, on the resort, the Paradiso. Lots of people in bikinis there. Why? Why are you asking me about the bikini outfit? Do you want to see my character in a bikini? <clears throat> Trust me, I would not look good in a bikini. My character would not look good in a bikini. Docking seal released. Okay, to New Atlantis. To Gal Bank. Okay. Man of Warp says you can equip it on any companion. Oh, I see. So exactly which companions do you think I should equip You'll a bikini on? You'll be scanned as you enter the city. Please. Man of Warp? Who should I put a bikini on? I'm asking, what would you do? Who, are, who do you have wearing bikinis in your game? I'm not judging, I'm just asking. Sam Coe says Technicolor 2. Vasco says Pyro. There you go. Let's give it to Vasco. <laughs> Mike DiCarlo says, if you go into the Unity without finding all your powers, and you want to go into the Unity a second time finding all the powers, will the ones you found in the second run always be behind? You're asking the wrong person, because I don't even know what you mean by unity, as I haven't gotten to that point in the game. Do it for science, Ox, says Schalk Engelbricht. For science. Bikinis are always for science. Can we run through it one more time? The lives of nearly every individual in the settled systems are so heavily influenced by what goes on in this building. Thank you, Andresa. Hello. Welcome to the... <clears throat> The uh, Galbank Archives. May I see your credentials, please? One second, everybody. Hold on a second. I need to make a quick phone call. Sorry. This is getting kind of weird. Okay, sorry about that. I am back. All right, um, are there any other employees down here? Oh, no, none at all. I'm all alone down here. Yeah, yep, completely by myself. Well, I, I guess you're down here too, right? So <laughs> that's two of us now. Sorry, not trying to lie to you or anything, just, uh, yeah. Wow, this, this guard is super competent. Is this where Galbank keeps all of its records? Oh, 
Uh, no. No, this is just their deep storage facility. All the current records are upstairs in the main facility. This is where, uh, where they put the older data onto long-term servers. Well, we can show credentials and say, here you go. Just one moment while I verify. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dombrowski. Welcome, sir. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. <clears throat> Do you usually treat all Galbank executives this unprofessionally? No. No. Never. Not at all. I I'm so sorry. Hey, uh, look. Please don't... Don't mention this to my supervisor, okay? She'll give me a low rating, and I'm gonna end up scrubbing floors. You're acting a bit strange. Me? No. Look, this is my first day on the job. Just cut me some slack, okay? I can't afford to lose it. I got a wife and kids to feed. Everything checks out. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. Okay. There we go. Have a wonderful day. All right, enter the archives. He's logging my visit. Hmm. We about to get in trouble here? Gal Bank. Deal with the ecliptic ambush. Really? Come, meet your death. And once again, we are triumphant. Ecliptic mercenaries after me. <clears throat> Who knew that mercenaries, ecliptic mercenaries, were waiting for me in here? None other than the Crimson Fleet. Galbank Archives. Actually, it was both the Crimson Fleet and UC Sysdef. Uh, information, uh, transponder information. All Galbank transports or. Uh, have been fitted with CBR-type encrypted transponder beacons. These beacons broadcast a predetermined long-range unique signature ping using high-frequency hyperburst scatter arrays. The arrays ensure that the beacons are always broadcasting at maximum spread to assist any specially equipped search vessels. CBR transponders feature the latest in encryption technology, boasting military-grade ultra-bit encryption, fully cycling crypto modulation, and a cascading frequency spectrum. 
In order to properly track a target transport, please submit a request to the security office to receive a tracking cipher. The transponders operate via an independent self-contained power source that allows them to remain detection capable for up to 250 years. Note that as the life of the power source declines, the broadcasted reception radius will be gradually reduced. Database disclaimer, by accessing archive materials, you are hereby consenting to observing proprietary materials belonging to Galbank and its subsidiaries. Any information contained within this system is for the express use of Galbank employees only. Sharing this information with entities outside of the Galbank ecosystem will result in immediate termination and potential criminal prosecution. Any concerns regarding these rules should be directed to Galbank Legal in New Atlantis. Lost Ship Registry. <clears throat> the Serendipity. Lost September 29th, 2188. Transport. Credits. Departure point Alpha Centauri Jemison, arrival point classified, full transponder loss. Then there's the legacy, but let's also learn about prosperity. Transport Galbank supplies, departure point Voli, Voli Alpha, arrival point classified, last known location unknown. Search attempts two failed. Supremacy. September 29th, 2291, cargo credits, departure Mars and the Sol system, intended arrival point Gemini or Jemison in the Alpha Centauri system, last known system position Sol, last known planetary location Saturn. Search attempts two failed. And then finally, we've got the legacy. Captain Zilong lost March 5th, 2211. Departure point classified, arrival point classified, last known system position Bannock, Bannock 4, 8 search attempts, all of which failed. Man of Orb says, pretty sure they were named Ecliptic Mercs because Eclipse Mercs already exist in Mass Effect 2. That would make a lot of sense. So who would hire Ecliptic Mercenaries to attack us? Well, who has hired Ecliptic Mercenaries already in this quest line? You see Sisdev. Why would Sisdev send ecliptic mercenaries to attack us? Well, maybe they want the information so that they can get the legacy. No one else knew we were coming here. And these guys were waiting for us. Something stinks. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. I am very upset about this. Here I am undercover and someone has betrayed me. Then again, I am in the process of betraying some people, so I suppose I had it coming. All right, I think that's it for Galbank. I can't access any of the other data records. The dude you could uh, you took your credentials from, I suppose so. Yeah, that's true. He knew I had this information. I suppose he could have hired the ecliptic mercs to be here waiting for me. Well, I certainly don't have enough information to accuse anyone just yet. But it's clear that this guy standing outside is an ecliptic mercenary. He's gonna be surprised watching me step out. Hope you're taking advantage of our remote transaction benefits. Where's the other guy? Where's the other guy? He's gone. And these two guys are here instead. What?
of you and me what's your problem with the FC what's my problem with them really I'm keeping the FC accountable for the terrible things they've done the colony war was an unforgivable tragedy countless lives could have been spared but the free star collective was out for blood the free star collective took my father away from me oh dear okay we could say your grief is blinding you to reality. That's not what happened, or what happened was terrible, but we all have to try and move on from it. But that's not what I want. I don't want us to move on. I want people to wake up and realize what the FC did to us, and I want them to be angry. I want justice and closure for everyone in the UC. Oh, that hairstyle is just driving me crazy. What do you think should happen to the FC embassy? Well, I want it torn down, of course. The fact that there's even an embassy for them here after what they did, it's infuriating. Tear it down. Tear it all down. Yikes. We could say diplomacy is needed to make sure another colony war won't happen again. We need that em embassy, or diplomacy is useless anyway. Ha! Diplomacy? That doesn't mean anything to the FC. They'll break any law and treaty that they feel like. It doesn't matter to them. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, her tragedy is, and grief is making her blind, I think, to the things the UC has done as well. I mean, they all did awful things during the Colony War. Man of Warp says, as for who I had wearing the bikini, and he didn't actually say as, he said ass. As for who I had wearing the bikini, yeah, let's just say, are. it was a companion who revealed something about themselves which made me want to ensure they had nothing else to hide. Interesting. So, Barrett? Hey, to each their own, man. I'm not gonna judge. Dust off complete. peaceful from up here, doesn't it? Okay, back to the key. David says, we need Vasco bikini merch. <laughs> Grab jump complete. That would probably be a top seller. All right, let's cycle that airlock and get aboard. Okay, we've got the info. Will we be able to find the treasure? Oop, wrong way. Need something?
fastest way? What's the fastest way? This way. All right. Gonna do a hard save here. Your buddy Rokoff is aboard the key. Told me everything had happened. Yeah, he won't shut up about you. Keeps going on and on. <laughs> now I remember why we kicked his ass out the fleet. Because he was too chatty? <laughs> we could say, I don't like Ro Rokov. Well, Rokov made me do everything, but at least we got what we wanted. Well, Rokov's not so bad. He turned out to be pretty helpful. Yeah, that'd be a first. All right, neighbor, you've made your point. Well, since you're vouching for Rokov, I guess we can give him another chance. All right, now that is out of the way, we can move on to the matter at hand, Crix's legacy. Speaking of which, let me see that data you copied from the Galbank archives. Ah, so the Galbank transport went down over Bannock 4. Bannock. Why does that sound familiar? Neva? Yeah, yeah, keep your panties on. I'm looking it up. And... I got it. Bannock 4. Let's see. Damn it. Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant. Uh-oh. You can't even get a ship near the thing without frying every circuit aboard. Approaching that in... <laughs> well, in any ship would be suicide. I mean, if it went down over a gas giant, it's gone. That's like falling into the heart of a sun. An EM-class gas giant? Don't know that one, huh? Oh, well, pick up your pencil. There's gonna be a test on this later. <laughs> EM-class means the planet is given off a ridiculously high amount of electromagnetic radiation. We're talking off the charts here. Fly your ship. Anywhere near one of these death traps, and you'll blow every single circuit on your ship. You'd be dead in space. Get it? There's got to be a way. Yeah, sure. We'll just wrap your ship in a ton of copper and launch you right in there. That ought to do the trick, right? Both of you shut up and think for a second. I'm sure Creeks hit the same roadblock. All we need to do is figure out how he got around it. If he got around it. This sounds like a goddamn waste of time to me. Maybe the data's wrong? No, no, this all makes sense. The data says the transport went down over Bannock 4, carrying currency during the Narian War. There were ships fighting across the entire galaxy back then. It's not that hard to believe this one got lost that far out from home. We could say, I agree with the Neva, this might be leading us nowhere, or Crix wouldn't have given up. That's the spirit, Rook. That is the essence of the Crimson Fleet that has been slipping away lately. Neva, the Galbank data says the transport had a CBR-27 transponder. Can we track that kind of thing? Pinpoint its exact location? That transponder is military grade. We're talking ultra-bit encryption, constantly reshuffling frequencies. We don't have shit like that laying around. But, before you get that pissy look <laughs> on your face, I heard that the UC's been working on a ship signal decryption system called the Comm Spike. We grab that little beauty, and we'll be able to track anything you want. All right, here is the plan, so shut up and listen. Rook, I want you and Neva to put your heads together and get us that comp spike. I don't care if it's mounted at the top of mast. I want it. In the meantime, I'm going to find out more about this EM class gas giant problem. And I think I know just who to ask. Give me a little time to crunch the numbers on the comp spike with Jazz, and I'll point us in the right direction. You don't give up easily, do you? We do or we die. That's the way Crix did things. And that is the way we should have been doing it for years. It's as simple as that. Oh, great. Stick me with Neva. We'll do the best we can or we'll figure this out. I promise. I promise? 
You gonna write that in your diary, little girl? <laughs> All right, that is enough. We are in arm's reach of Crix's legacy, and I don't have time to deal with this kind of bullshit. Now, both of you, get the hell out of here and get to work. All right, let's get this over with. Follow me. You're gonna write that in your diary, I promise. <laughs> she is awful and great at the same time. But of course, she's gonna take this opportunity to talk with us about the star, the treasure, the big award that we looted. She's gonna want it. But the other guy needs his cut too. And heck, I need my cut as well. Why does she get this thing? And she's walking in silence. She is not my fan right now. Optional, give the ES award to Neva. Interesting. Let's do a quick save here. All right, let's get right to it. Did you get the Earth Savior award, or am I going to be very disappointed? We could lie and say I couldn't find it. What's Jazz doing here? First of all, this is my section of the key, so I'm going to stand here for as long as I want. And second of all, I know all about that award and your deal with Neva. We don't keep secrets between us. Just throttle down and give her the damn thing already so we can get to work. Why do I have the feeling you're going to make more money off this thing than I am? Well, that's because you'd be absolutely right. You see, everyone above you in the fleet is making more than you are off the same gig. That's why we're all fighting our way to the top. Understood? Good. Now, you might want to hand over that award before I have you tossed off the key. Just a thought. So, we're undercover. We need to do anything we can to maintain our cover. The only thing that Ikande wanted us to keep from these guys was Crix's legacy. They can't get that. That's way too much money. It'll empower the Crimson Fleet forever. This thing, this little award, it's only worth like 65,000. It's a big chunk of change. Don't get me wrong, and I'd love to keep it, but maintaining my cover, I think, is worth it. And so, we'll give the award. Here you go. Well, well, look at that. You followed my directions, and now you're gonna end up with some credits in your pocket. Of course, it would have been more money if you hadn't blabbed about the damn thing to roll call. But that's on you. Anyway, here's your cash. Keep this up and I might even start respecting you. All right, Fleet. We've all got work to do, so let's get to it. Anything ship-related, you're at the right place. I got 3,000 credits for completing the quest and 14,000 credits for delivering the star. That's a pittance compared to what it was worth. And I got less because Rokov got his share. But to me, I think it's only fair that Rokov got his share because he was part of the deal to begin with. Right. I heard his sister is some hardcore mercy. Well, now thankfully, the Crimson Fleet is taking a little bit of a break while they figure out what to do next, I get so that I have time to go all the way back to the Vigilance. You looking to start something? Separation complete. Duck on it. Ow. Ow. Hey, what are you doing in my way? Oh my God. No. 
On my way. And the vigilance is is in the RNI system now. Why? Why has the vigilance moved to the RNI system? Must have been a good jump. We're still in one piece. Look at that. We're all the way back here because that's where the vigilance has gone. Interesting. Okay, Commander Conde, I'm going to assume you didn't send the ecliptic, ecliptic mercenaries after me. Let's take a look at the brig and see if he's got anyone in the brig. Oh, we'll do that on the way out. I saw one of the ensigns get an Alpha Centauri from Officer Petrosian the other day. The man takes his job very seriously. So I heard there was a bit of excitement on the Siren of the Stars. Your handiwork, I assume? Um, we could say news travels fast around here. I was able to successfully steal the Galbank credentials, or some of the Sirens of the Star's passengers should be arrested. Let's say that. Nice work. Any specific evidence you picked up regarding criminal activity should be given to Lieutenant Toft after the debriefing. If the evidence pans out, you can visit those alleged criminals in our break the next time you stop by the Vigilance. But for now, what do you have on Delgado and his little ragtag group of pirates? I was able to successfully steal the Galbank credentials. Yes, and I heard there were no casualties. Excellent work. Except for the ecliptic hit squad that you took down at the archives. We've taken care of that mess, by the way. Speaking of which, I assume you copied the information from the Galbank's computers. Let me see what you got. So the legacy went down at Bannock 4. Bannock 4. Hmm. Why does that sound familiar, Doft? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant, sir. There isn't a ship in the fleet that could safely get near that type of world. How did you know all that? The Bannock system was a site of a significant battle during the Narian War. I had to do a research paper on the subject at the Academy. Robert uh, Searsema says the Vigilance must be looking for the farmers. <laughs> the independent farmers, part of List. Yes, of course they are. A problem with the quest. Um, okay, we can say, I feel like they've hit a dead end or Delgado will figure it out. It sounds like you admire that lunatic. We could say, I was simply warning you about his resourcefulness, or I don't admire him, but you have to admit he has been clever. He's kept ahead of Sistef, we could say. I don't admire him, but he has been clever, I guess. I think his gospel's gone straight to your head. Maybe we made a mistake choosing you for this assignment. Damn. That's enough, Lieutenant. Damn. Even if Delgado has an immediate solution to the EM problem, there's still the matter of tracing the legacy's transponder signal. Aren't you concerned that I'm helping them get closer to Crix's legacy? Of course I am. We don't really have a choice in the matter. There are no shortcuts. The route you're taking to secure Crix's legacy for the Crimson Fleet is the only one at our disposal. If you suddenly change your behavior, they'll know something's wrong. I realize it's difficult, but I urge you to stay the course for now. In the meantime, we'll formulate a plan to ensure the Crimson Fleet doesn't get their hands on that money. Can't you just fly someone out there and trace it yourselves? I'm not certain. Galbank uses their own proprietary transponder system. Even a ship as old as the Legacy would be a challenge to trace. And even if we could find the ship, we don't have anything strong enough to resist those levels of EM radiation. Unfortunately, we're hampered by the same obstacles as the Crimson Fleet. Hitomi Salazar says, I do actually admire Delgado. 
The fleet has some of the best NPCs. In terms of them being characters, I agree. They're all really interesting characters. In terms of admiring him, I will say that he's charismatic. He's a good leader. He makes up his mind, and even if it's a bats not crazy idea, he forges ahead, he inspires everyone around him, he goes on the ground himself. Um, he, he's got a sort of enthusiasm for what he's interested in or what his plan is that's contagious. It infects everyone around him, even gets Naiva on board, even when she thinks it's really stupid. Um, so he's a great leader. If you would kindly continue. But I, I don't know if I have very much else about him that I would admire. Okay. They think something called the comm spike will solve that problem. They have information about the comm spike? <sighs> Damn it. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that device, sir. No, you shouldn't be familiar with it. It's a highly classified project. It's an advanced signal decryption and tracking device that the UC Navy's been working on for years. How the hell did the Crimson Fleet find out about that? There must be an information leak somewhere, sir. It's the only thing that makes sense. I'll see what I can find out. Fine. This is what we're going to do. You keep playing along and go after the comm spike. Lieutenant Toft and I will see what we can find out about Bannock 4. Are you any closer to convincing the Council to attack the Crimson Fleet? My superiors are stubborn. They aren't going to authorize an attack on the key based on my flights of fancy, I've been told. We need more evidence that all the Crimson Fleet's plans will result in them actually getting their hands on this fabled cache of credits. Aren't we going to warn the UC Navy about my attempt to grab the comm spike? I don't see the point. The Crimson Fleet apparently has a pipeline of information flowing from somewhere within the UC military. Any attempt to move the comm spike would be a waste of time. We need to play this close to the vest. Well, yeah, but I don't want to get killed by the UC military. All right, I'll report back with any evidence that I recover. Perfect. Just stick with the plan and we'll see who gets to Krix's legacy first. Oh dear. This is a dangerous gamble, Ikande. Heard you made off with something called the Earth Savior Award. Damn pirates will have you steal anything that isn't bolted down. Yep, that's me. Okay, we still need to do doctor's orders, and we should probably do this before we destroy the Crimson Fleet. The best there is, meet Neva and Jasmine on the key. Let's check out the brig. Hey. Nope. Nope. Which one's that? We already talked with Austin Rake. Nope. Nope. We already talked with Adler Kemp. I guess we have to wait until the next time we come aboard, even though we handed in the evidence before. Okay. Hello?
Switching over to standard engines. We have a clean dock, right on the money. All right, let's see what they've figured out. What do I got to do to get this comm spike? And is it going to get me in a buttload of trouble? Probably. Need something? <sighs> and I find them right where I left them. All right, Jazz. What do you got? According to the latest, the comm spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jimson. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. She would be wise to do the same. Where do I know that name, Dayu? Have I heard it before? Premium smuggling routes? Definitely. We're talking cargo depots, star yards, research stations, and, like in SY920's case, military outposts. I've never seen someone new to the game have so many contacts. It's the reason we let her join up in the first place. I don't know how she accomplished that. We've been trying to crack some of those places for years. Should I expect any trouble? You're in the fleet. You should always expect trouble. As far as Juan goes, even though she's one of our newer contacts, you shouldn't have any problems dealing with her. Sounds like she'll be useful. I sure hope so. Because she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's going to be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. If it's in the prototype phase, how do we even know that it's going to work? We paid good money for the information, so I'm sure it works. And if it doesn't, a certain source at MAST is going to have to deal with a very pissed off Neva, and that would be the end of that. You just bring the tech here, I'll do the rest. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops. Oh. And we both know those idiots don't mess around. Right. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. Stealth mission. <laughs> How will you... Oh. Juan, get me inside the station. She's got the clout to get you in the front door. They're gonna think you're part of a regular supply delivery. Beyond that, you and Juan are gonna have to put your heads together and come up with a plan. So you don't care if I shoot my way through the place? Are you kidding? The UC's already painted giant red crosshairs on our backs. Keyway and his pals at Sysdef won't rest until we're dead. It's not like you can make them any angrier at us, right? Shoot the place full of holes if you want. Just bring back that calm spike. Understood. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. Oh. <laughs> Okay, you'll make sure. More like, get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. <laughs>
<laughs> Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. Ooh. And you, get the hell out of here. And don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. Sure thing, boss. If Juan asks why we need the comm spike, what do I tell her? I'm gonna leave that up to you, Rook. If you get into deep trouble, and you think bringing her into the fold is gonna make the difference, tell her whatever you want. At some point, Delgado's gonna be promising everyone their cut of Crix's legacy. If we want him to stick with the fleet, it's inevitable. But until the money's within reach, the less people that know, the better. What can you tell me about Juan? The Crimson Fleet made contact with her about a year ago. We were searching for a smuggling connection in UC space, and her name kept popping up repeatedly, so I decided to put her to the test. Not only did she pass, but the results were off the charts. Made us both a ton of credits. That was good enough for me. Beyond that, I don't know much about her. But hey, as long as she keeps my gal bank account humming, she can keep all the secrets she wants. Right. Stay sharp, Rook. Okay, how's my inventory looking? I'm at 90. That's pretty good. Are there any weapons I'm holding that I need to get rid of? Yeah, the Furious UC Naval Cutlass. I don't need that. Let me sell that really quickly. Oh, and I just got a new uh, jetpack, didn't I? Oh, but it's worse. Well, by a lot. It's legendary, but uh, look at those stats. Holy cow, that's just awful. I might as well sell it. Yeah? I heard Isla's sister is some hardcore mercenary. I wouldn't get on her bad side. <laughs> no price. Tactical gear is my specialty. Okay, let's go to sell. Packs. And this guy. 138. Not really worth hauling around, is it? Stay safe out there. In the fleet, you have well, to put up, shut up, or die. I am a bit nervous about this one. Buy more digipix if you can, says Deuteronomus. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need more. I've used a bunch. Let's see if they have any for sale here. That's a good call. I do not care what assurances you have been given Brad that Lundvig we are safe here. I do not digipix. trust the Crimson Fleet. Yeah, you're right. I am looking to start something. You wanna I'm survive? I'm sure I got something. 14, I'll take all of them. I am here if you need me. Can you believe how much Rick, see if he sells any. Wait, I, I hope you actually... Any. All right. No, she doesn't. Whatever. Let's see if she does. I always thought he you don't make it. Best. Whatever you... And no, she doesn't. Consider trying to raise one as a pet. All right. See Imagine what having happens. your own Terramorph. The fleet is family. Stealing from each other is just what you call a professional curse. Well, I mean, I wonder if we can walk around is she seeing anyone right now? using our Vanguard credentials. Maybe we can just bluff our way past people saying that we're Vanguard? Undocking complete, Captain. Uruba Reverse says, Hey ho, there she blows a pirate's life for me. Thank you, Uruba Reverse. We are definitely playing the role of the pirate. All right, this is gonna be an Alpha Centauri. I'm not carrying any contraband. Let's head down to Jemison.
Chad has been saying that for this mission, I should do it without a companion. Something on your mind? Oh, uh, we've got some dialogue here. Can I ask you some questions about our journey to find your friends? Certainly. What can you tell me about Aaron Bascom? He is a quiet man. Reserved. I, I believe he had lived through a great many hardships, though he never spoke of them. I never felt it proper to ask. He valued his personal space and quiet moments. It was one thing we always shared in common. Years ago, I had heard he was alive, but did not attempt to contact him. I did not feel it was right. I hope this is not a mistake. Brad Ludwig says, don't forget the trade authority shop on the key. You're right. I'll do that next time. How do you know anyone else is still alive? I do not know. Not for sure. I did not see them fall that day, and... I suppose I have hoped they survived. I admit, I have not investigated before now, at least in part because of... what I feared I might learn. Why did House Varun rely on smugglers? House Varun is in a distant corner of space, far away from the rest of the settled systems. While this serves our interests, it can also pose challenges. Many critical resources are scarce, and diplomatic relations with the United Colonies and Freestar Collective were tense at the best of times. It was the most practical way to acquire what we need, without raising too many questions. Still is. I can't think of any other questions. All right. If you have more questions, I shall do my best to answer them. Uh, this is still not grayed out. Yes, please. But we've done everything there. Another time. Ah, it is a good day, yes? Okay, I think it's time we went our separate ways. Oh no. You are not getting out of this so easy. Not when we are right in the middle of something. Oh no! I started her personal quest. I can't dismiss her. But maybe... Always good to speak with a friend. Wait here? Do not have all the fun without me. Hey, okay. You wait there, Andrea. I shall retrieve you when the time is appropriate. Now for a stealth mission. Yay, stealth. You will be scanned as you enter the city. Please keep... Okay. So we need to go to Kay's place in the well. I do odd jobs at evening hours. Lift crates, stock shelves, sweep floors. It's not much, but it's enough. Why are you talking to me? I'm not much for prayer. Tried it once, didn't stick. But maybe it's like tape, and I was just on the wrong side. Any other advice? Nope, just uh, make sure you wipe your feet. You track mud in, then someone's gotta sweep it out. Most days, that's me. What's it like living in the well? What you see is what you get. Work's rough, day's rougher. But I like to think when things get bad, that's when people's kindness shines brightest. Even down here, <laughs> when the sun don't shine. Did you grow up here? No, I came here like a lot of folks, looking for work. It's an ongoing search. The ones who've been here for a while, uh, they can't even sleep unless they got a turbine in their ear. Maybe someday I'll be the same. Take care. Chad is saying that by jumping up, I missed evidence. Okay, we'll go the long way. 
There's Kay's house. Always nice to see a fresh face around here. You stop in whenever you like. Look at that. Who wants talk evidence? So, when did you stop flying the Swan, anyway? When the cargo became more valuable than the ship. True. The fleet's got us real busy these days, and we are making good money smuggling all this contraband. But if any time was the right time for a break... Hey, there's still work to do. I need to check with my contacts at the spaceport and find out what guards are on rotation when we leave port. Mm. Then it's back to the key to make sure Delgado gets his cut and to make sure he hasn't cut us out. I worry sometimes that being in New Atlantis, we're missing out on the big scores. I know that old dog has something big planned. I can feel it. Sheesh, that is a lot to think about. And here I thought the pirate life was carefree. Maybe for some people, but that's not how I work. Well, you feel free to plan our next moves from now to the new year. I'm all about living in the present and being where your feet are. That's fine. Just make sure to wipe those feet before boarding my ship. And that's plenty incriminating. The new Atlantean 05 permanently grants the recipe for the shepherd's pie food item. Welcome, so long as you keep your hands to yourself. Understand? <clears throat> All right, so I wouldn't have walked right past it either. Huh. Wonder why that door is locked. I take it your neighbor's new recruit? Don't you mean the new rook? Ah. You must not be used to pirates being so cordial. But in the heart of New Atlantis, we have to do our best to keep up appearances. I can't afford to be as rough as some of our cohorts. It's bad for business. I have a name, you know. Oxhorn. I may be new, but I got plans. And you must be the smuggler. Careful. The walls have ears. SY920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. I do have conditions. My assistant will provide you with a list, we could say. Or great, more rules to fo follow. Or let's hear them. Let's see what happens if we be sarcastic. Huh. Neva warned me you were difficult. Clearly I didn't understand what she meant, but I do now. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. But make no mistake, once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. You'll just bail if something happens? It's not personal. If you're caught, that entire installation will be on you. There's nothing I can do for you at that point. Except send flowers to your next of kin. How loyal are you to the fleet? Look, I know I don't have a lot of history with the fleet. But I'm putting my reputation and ship on the line for this. That alone should tell you enough. I was counting on the extra gun, or got it. Good, then we have a deal. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. Ooh, dear. Sounds like this is gonna be a long one. I'd like to know who I'm working with. Can you tell me about yourself? I'd like to, but I need to keep a low profile. In my experience, the more people know about you, the more they have over you. Hmm, you're right. I want to know you so I can use the information against you. 
or it'll help with the mission to know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Or you've got to have someone you can trust. Let's try it'll help with the mission. True, but silence is a powerful thing. I find the best way to get to know someone is to watch them work. Talking just muddies the picture. Anyways, I appreciate the small talk. Delgado's crew aren't usually so chatty. But let's keep our focus on the mission. We can swap bar stories and share scars when we've got enough creds to buy the bar and fix the scars. How often do you dock at this station? Enough to be on a first name basis with the Marines working the comps. It also helps they want us to dock. A cargo ship means supplies, special requests, slates from home. In the void of space, a cargo hauler is a soldier's best friend. How much do you know about the job? Only what I've been told. Get you on the SY920, get you out if I can. That being said, I can be a better guide if I know what it is we're after. So it's up to you. Do we want to make this difficult for ourselves, or do we want to make it harder? Or easier? Um... We're going to be finding evidence so that they can be, uh... So that she'll be picked up by the UC anyway. Uh, let's play it safe. Neva said you don't need to know the details. Fine by me. If this goes bad, the less I know, the better. And if I do get caught, there'll be nothing to confess to. All right. We'll talk more on the ship. Great. Well, I'm getting the impression this is going to be a really long mission, and I definitely don't have time to finish it today, but I think I can start it, and we'll see how far I can get. You will be scanned as you enter the city. Please keep... Alt says might want to pick up a few digipics. Uh, I think I have plenty for now. I've got 15. Ah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I need to pick up more. Ah, oh, backtracking. Okay, thank you, Alt Wendell. You will be scanned as you enter the city. Okay. Sell Digipix. You see surplus, maybe? I'm telling you, Bianchi, something's wrong with the boots you sold me. I wear them to the metro. Suddenly, the shuttle runs late. I buy a cup of coffee, and the barista screws up my order. It's like I'm walking under ladders with a broken mirror in my pocket. And the only time it happens is when I'm wearing your boots. <laughs> So, what do you want me to do about it? I want a damn refund! Fine, fine. I'll take the boots back. Just don't tell anyone you bought them from here. <laughs> I want them! Can I have your unlucky boots, please? 
<laughs> Happy to make a deal. You need stuff, I need credits. It all works out. All this stuff is legit. Promise. I couldn't help overhearing that argument. Ugh, oh, right. The boots. I hate to admit it, but she has a point. She's the third customer to return the pair. All for the same reason. The boots might really be cursed. Wow, cursed boots? Where did you get them? Like most of my supply from one of my UC contacts. But after the second customer returned the boots, I got curious and I did some digging. Turns out they were seized from a House of Arun ship. That alone is enough to convince me something's amiss. Have you tried destroying them? And risk releasing whatever's inside them? <laughs> I've seen enough horror vids to know how this goes. <laughs> Have you tried wearing the boots yourself? I thought about it once, but then I thought better of it. Best not to tempt fate. And besides, they're not of my size. It's just a coincidence. Superstition. It doesn't matter if you believe it. Somebody might, and that's bad for business. Hey, you're a pilot, right? Maybe you can do me a favor. I've heard of a UC station at the far end of the galaxy called the Den. You go there and stash these boots in a crate, and I'll give you credits as a compensation. I mean, I go there all the time, so why not just jettison them off into space? Believe it or not, I actually tried that. What? And do you know what happened? Some UC pilot picked up the cargo and somehow it found its way back no to my store. Way. No, oh, I wanted the boots gone. But I also want to know exactly where they are. Bull crap, that did not happen. All right, all right, I'll deliver the boots for you. Finally, someone to give these blasted boots the boot, if you pardon uh, the expression. Uh, uh, Here, uh, I'll have your credits for you when the job is done. Lucky boots. I gotta see these suckers. Oh man, we can't look at them, they're just in a box. Can I put them on? No, I can't equip the lucky boots. Bomber. All right, I want Digipix. You ask me, the real new Atlantic. Take your time, I got it. Okay, oh man, doesn't sell Digipix. All right. Hey, take it easy. Let's find someone who does. Trade authority would. The electronic store, maybe. I'm gonna be a big time space. Pack. No loitering, okay? <sighs> yes, seven. My own crew, my own corporate sponsor. Stay safe out there. You didn't hear this from me, but those ecliptic mercenaries. The factions use them sometimes. We have heard that over Free and over again. Thing about the trade business? You won't find a better select. Miscellaneous and two Digipex. A wide berth. The and trade authority appreciates your visit. Assholes should be blasted into space dust. Okay, well, I've almost doubled my Digipex. I think that should be enough to get me through. Yeah, let's just go. And there it is. Once we board, that kicks things off, doesn't it? Let's do a hard save here.
Whew. Always a satisfying moment to what return are you doing to your here? ship. I left you behind! Andresia! How can I assist? Wait here. Of course, take your time. I will take my time, thank you. Oh no! I'm gonna totally fail this stealth mission, aren't I? <laughs> See if there's any other incriminating evidence here. Nobody can stop the Crimson Fleet. Oh hey, yeah, yeah. I did. Yes, what? Howdy. Howdy. Brad Ludwig says, Hitomi asked if you got the magazine at Apex Elect? Uh, probably <clears throat> not, as it doesn't ring a bell. Excuse me. Pardon. As long as the credits keep rolling in, life's good. Okay, no new evidence. <laughs> Hello. But we've got quite a bit more to explore. Holy cow, this is a big ship. Jeez. Oh my god. Don't mind me, I'm just an extra crewmate. Thanks for letting me lift a few things. Okay, that's the perimeter. All right, I think that's it. Oh man, I'm getting so turned around. Glad you're in the fleet. If you weren't, I would have killed you already. Wow. Tough guy. Okay. Hello. Yes? What? Always looking for the next mark. I think I got everything in this section. I don't know. This is a sprawling place. Hey. Okay, well, let's go down. Find side star. That's it for down here.
Okay. And now I'm like officially Excuse lost. Excuse me. Oh, I'm officially lost. Wow. There we go. Okay. I think I got everything. And there we go. Well, if there is any evidence aboard this ship, let me know, because I did not find any. And I scanned it pretty thoroughly. <clears throat> All right, a few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Return your piece of cargo if you have to. Chad is saying that I skipped a couple of lockers. See you. Yes. In big room with lots of cargo, says the Grey Ghost, really? Okay, I'll go back there. Um... Howdy. Well, I'm not seeing any evidence laying about. Are you sure there's evidence here? Okay, I'm not saying anything, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, hello. No evidence, says chat. Oh, psh. All right, thank you. Back to dialogue, then. All right, a few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Return your piece of cargo if you have to. Fair warning, I get anxious when I don't talk, or I'll be as silent as a crate of tissues. Or shouldn't be a problem, let's do crate of tissues. Good. Say nothing and let their minds fill in the gaps. Arguably a good philosophy for more than just this mission. Hey, I got some likes I'd out of I'd say her. so. There are times when you have to put on a show, but that's more for new clients. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. <laughs> if you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. Well, I'm ready. Let's go. <coughs> All right. Then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems go. I'm a box we'll grab jump the SY920 from here. Don't worry about your personal ship. The fleet will make sure it's secure. You can take this time to prepare. Just try not to bother my pilot while they're flying. Don't worry, Captain. I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. Captain, I retract my earlier statement. For the record, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Roger that. 
Oh. And she doesn't mind. I just loot whatever I want. Right under her nose. You've entered secure UC military space. Identify yourself or you will be considered hostile. This is Captain Huan Dai Yu, cargo class ship ID UC-7938, requesting permission to dock. Identity confirmed. Prepare your ship for scanning. You're clear to dock at docking bay 2. Looks like Wait. we're clear. We'll talk more once we're docked. Sounds good. Let's see how somebody else docks a ship. See if I can improve on my technique. Okay. This is a great little sequence. Bingo. And we're docked. Yes. Okay, we're in. First things first. The station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. Great. To get past oh, them, man. you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. What if I get stuck? Is there any way to reach you? Provided you haven't sounded the alarm, then yeah, like I said, if you can find an intercom, I'll keep a channel open. What's this about vents? This is a star station, so there are plenty of ventilation ducts you can slither into. As far as tactics go, it's an oldie, but goodie. Tell me again about these security checkpoints. Only military personnel are allowed out of the cargo area. That's why we need to get you to the barracks to find you a uniform. Don't worry, they won't suspect a thing. I would hope not. But if they do, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Yes? What? Right. Oh dear. My pleasure. I am anxious. Always looking for the next mark. That's board. Okay. Well, Andrea, um... I trust you are well. Wait here, please. I can do that. Thank you. Oh, dear. Yeah, so we are in the cargo area. You with the Jade Swan? Loading and unloading only. Stay clear of the military barracks. Right, I will stay clear of the military barracks. Do your job, keep your head down, and we won't have trouble. We've got a pretty good tracking system. We just have to make sure we punch the numbers in right. How much of this can I explore before I have to... Stealth. There's a lot of work to do and never enough time to do it. Oh man. I hope I don't end up murdering everybody. Mastering the Blaze became a gold ox. Thank you, Mastering the Blaze. All right, we've got three levels here. Just, wow, three huge levels. Um, uh, we'll clear this middle level first. We are looking for evidence. Hold up. This area is for SY920 military only. Uh, why only military? 
The contents and operations of the facility are classified. Only uniformed personnel are allowed beyond the checkpoint. We could try to pass a persuade check to say I forgot my uniform. Rules are rules. Can't let you in unless you're military. And it's extremely difficult. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> There's still other checkpoints. No one's going to care if you let one person into the barracks. That's true. It's almost more of a hassle talking to you. All right, fine. You're good. Just be quick about it. That goes for your friend, too. Critical success. My friend? My friend isn't even here. I had my friend wait. I didn't finish exploring that lower section yet. yet. I'll do... I'll be back, guy. I'll be back. Find an ensign uniform. Optional <clears> top <throat> one. Okay, uh... Let's go upstairs first. I've heard the engineers say Dr. Vogel is an AI. I guess that's their way of saying he's smart. And there's not much up here. Lots of ammo, none of which I'm going to risk looting right now. Mm -hmm. Let's take this down. <laughs> and another huge level to explore. Perimeter Storage security. and mess hall. Cargo bay computer. Packages. I know as an engineer, packaging falls out of my purview, but I would like to report that some of the packaging from the last few shipments has fallen short of the UC standard. This may be anecdotal, but I opened a crate the other day and a terminal was inside without any foam, wrap, or cushioning. A paints, it paints a gruesome picture, I'm sure. A terminal rattling around in a box, grav jumping across time and space with no protective barrier to absorb the shock. It's a minor miracle the screen wasn't cracked. I asked the crew uh, who packed the boxes, and they just shrugged and told me to take it up with mast, which is unacceptable. I've heard some of the haulers don't like Ms. Dayu because she's not very chatty, but at least everything she delivers is professionally packed. A blowny. And Elijah. Er, not to rat him out, but I think Elijah lost his SY920 maintenance key card. Again, every time I ask him to grab something from the utility room, he makes up some excuse, which gets more and more ridiculous every time I ask. This time he said Commander Natara wanted him to measure the lug nuts in a toolbox to make sure they were no greater than three centimeters in diameter, according to the Treaty of Narian. <laughs> I didn't want to be the bad guy and tell him that's not what the treaty says, but I think he knows that already. I know this is going to sound mean, but can we put in a requisition to have the keycard stapled to his forehead? I'm seriously getting tired of him losing it. Marquez. So, there's a keycard floating around somewhere around here, belonging to Elijah. Let's see if we can swipe it. This is not my favorite type of mission. I tell you what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, is it break time yet? Oh, maybe I dropped it while working. It's tough not seeing any action. Securing a station like this is a pretty important job. Okay, I don't see anything down here. I could have missed it because, granted, it's huge, but I don't see anything down here. 
So let's you go get that mess hall. Culinary specialist. Things were a little too loose under Commander Woods. With Commander Vitaro, we had stricter checkpoints and more patrols. Hey! Authorized personnel only. Oh dear, uh, what sort of authorization is needed? Access to the command bay is limited to SY920UC military only. No unauthorized personnel. No exceptions. Whoops. All right, I'll be right back. Let's hope I see a Marine next time. I really shouldn't be exploring. I need to just go straight for the uniform, huh? Hall. Can you do me a favor and bring that plate over to the guard at Cargo Bay 2? I made a black pepper crusted steak sandwich only without the pepper. Just how he likes it. Hey. The guard at Cargo Bay 2? I think the crew here appreciates what I do. It's not exactly gourmet food, but it beats eating rations. Steak sandwich, examine. It's a black pepper crusted steak sandwich minus the black pepper. <laughs> we can sabotage it or do nothing. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to kill a guy. What kind of sabotage is it? Am I gonna make him get diarrhea or let's do nothing for now. We can always go back. That's funny. Well, hopefully, it looks like they're giving us plenty of opportunities, but I need to find, I need to find the uniform. Yes? Crew quarters. Sabotage and deliver the sandwich to the guard. Optional, speak to Juan. where the, the crew quarters are. So this is where I'm going to find a uniform. My ego is another story. Do we really need someone patrolling the barracks? There's sensitive equipment up here. If it were up to me, the commander would have you monitor something less important. Like your career. <sighs> Ouch. I got feelings, you know. Hey, at least something of yours works. Now suck it up and keep your eyes open. Enzen Akasaka's uniform. Okay. Let's take the rest of my armor off. Okay. I look like Enzen Akasaka. Man of Warp says, I wonder if there's an Ark Dornan type sergeant somewhere in here. That would be a lot of fun. Okay, I am now dressed as an ensign. So, hey, here we go. Crew quarters computer. Security standards from Commander Natara. A reminder to all personnel that the projects being developed on this station are highly classified and involve extremely sensitive information. As a loyal citizen of the United States, Colony is a member of the UC Navy. You are being entrusted not to share this knowledge with any outside party, including your families. Any disclosure of the activities, projects, or data on the station will result in an immediate dismissal and court martial. For those in the cargo bay, an extra reminder that only uniformed personnel are allowed in the mess hall and barracks. I've heard instances of contractors being allowed in the dining area, and this is strictly forbidden. Lee, I understand you're upset and don't want to see me, but when you last left, you took the wrong uniform and my elevator keycard with it. But it's the uniform that, that I really need back. 
what do you think would happen if I was wearing yours and used the wrong cipher in the command bay? They would think me an intruder and shoot me on sight. So I'll ask you one more time. Let's meet up somewhere and trade. We don't have to talk, and I'm not going to try to explain myself. I just want my uniform back. Personnel file, Liana Zaremi. Liana Zaremi, uh, height, weight, birthplace, Gagarin, rank Ensign. Graduated with a focus on computer engineering and software as a civilian. Employed briefly at Galbank before being recruited as a military software specialist. Eventually was allowed to transfer to infantry at her own request, serving initial tour on SY-90. Well, we got the uniform. Is there an ID around here somewhere? Did you pick? Oh, so now I'm wearing the uniform. It's no longer theft. Oh, that's clever. Okay. Right. Great expectations. I heard a computer somewhere. There it is. Crew quarters computer. Security standards. We read that about the other night. Uh, from Wynn to Hauka. The other day when you invited me to the security checkpoint for some hand-to-hand -hand combat training, I was not myself. In fact, if I took a blood alcohol test at the time, I think I could have actually proven this legally. As it stands, I cannot. I don't even remember the thing that didn't happen, so if you could clear this up with Leanna and tell her this non-fact, I'd appreciate it. P.S. I get that what didn't happen left a trail of physical evidence implying that it actually did happen, but maybe you can convince her it was basically nothing? Damn it, I'm screwed, aren't I? <laughs> what happened? Dear God. Discipline from Commander Natara. Enzin Nagata, I've heard reports that you haven't taken your post to the cargo bay as seriously as I had hoped. While these allegations have yet to be substantiated, I have decided to be proactive and take measures to help maintain unit alertness. You will now be splitting your shift at the checkpoint with another Marine effective immediately. With these changes, I trust there will be no more questions about your behavior going forward. When you're not on your shift, leave your uniform and elevator keycard in the locker at the checkpoint. Elevator keycard in locker at checkpoint. Profile, Haukuda Nagata, birthplace Mars, rank Ensign, originally worked for the Sidonia security team before training as a UC Marine. Pedigree notwithstanding, shows high marks and efficiency with assault we weapons and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Hmm. Frontier attire. Ken's just laying out here. Okay, I've explored this, I've explored that. Let's go to the water closet. Got our first event. 
Well, well, well. All right, so there's a vent in the water closet that we can use to access other portions of the ship. Good to know. But we're not done with exploring the barracks yet. Ooh. Everybody's gambling. Crew quarters computer. Security standards, we read that. Rules of engagement, when, yeah, I have your stuff, but after what you did and who you did it with, I don't want to see you ever again. If I'm in the mess hall, you need to be on, in your bunk. If I'm in the cargo bay, you need to be in your bunk. If I'm anywhere in the settled systems outside my personal quarters, then you need to be in your bunk. In fact, the only time you're allowed to leave your bunk, as far as I'm concerned, is when I'm in mine. Because if I so much as see your face again, I'm going to discharge my firearm right in your teeth. What did she do? My God. Personal profile, when... Akasa, A Akasaka, birthplace Jemison, rank ensign, matriculated to the Sword Military Academy after being recruited at a job fair, received accommodations for marksmanship and physical fitness, assigned to SY920 following graduation. So much drama. Ensign Zeremi's uniform. Which uniform should we choose? Huh. Ensign... Akasaka's Ensign Zeremi's. Let's wear this one. She seemed to be less problematic, I guess. In case we get stopped. Hard times. I wonder if the soldiers will have different responses based on the different uniforms that we wear. So we found three different ensigns. Presumably that's going to be three different uniforms. Looks like I missed one. Uh, no, I don't want to waste my time on this. I think I sh I'm only going to waste my time on a harder locks because that's going to provide better, better resources. Okay. place is a densely decorated area. <coughs> okay, this is where we came from. Right. Well, I'm out of time. I'm going to go ahead and do a hard save now. And we're going to have to pick up right here where we left off. We have the uniform. <sighs> we're good to go. And we'll explore the ship later. Alright, thank you everybody for joining me for today's broadcast. Uh, as I said earlier, no broadcast tomorrow as I'm, I need that time to work on my lore video. So unless I get my lore video done early and uh, I'm able to do a broadcast tomorrow, the next Starfield broadcast will be Monday. I'll definitely, uh, definitely let you guys know on Friday if I'm able to go live early. But that's not it for today. Tonight we have Scotch and Smoke Rings, my weekly show that I've been doing for many, many years now where you've got questions, I've got answers. We've got a long, an hour-long Q&A and then we'll dive into a scary game. This time we're playing Dead Space 3, which has proven to be a lot of fun. So I hope to see each and every one of you tonight. Until then, I hope you guys get some dinner in you, get some rest or whatever you need, and I'll see you in a couple of hours. Thanks for joining me, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.